Hello, day 144. I'm going to do some more refactoring today. So same, similar work as yesterday. Hey there, Nui. How's it going? VIP Nui. Um, I'm going to skip the intro for now because I think I've done it enough so people know what I'm doing unless someone comes in and says, what are you doing? And then I'll answer that. Just get started on the work. So the plan is essentially the same as yesterday. Quite literally, the plan is the same as yesterday. Because it didn't really finish. So, I'm working on taking these admin message handlers and their corresponding server message handlers, these in particular, those and corresponding ones here, and updating them to use the new macros, which use the new message factory, which uses all the new stuff that removes all the boilerplate work. I need to get through this and then re, uh, clean up my unit tests and then I'll feel a lot better, a lot better about continuing work on this part of the game server, which is turning out to be a pretty critical component. I know it doesn't look like, actually it does look like it. Uh, it makes me worry that this might be coming a god class, so to speak. So a class that's too big, too centralized, and it might need to be broken up. Which I can still do. I kind of already started that process. Hey there, Dry's Jan. See, yeah, it's more refactoring today. So I've already started to break this thing up. Uh, how best to show that? I guess you can see it here. There are subcomponents to it. So if I was, um, if I do a little bit more thought, I think I could probably break coordinator up into a smaller subsystem and then either. Uh, update this diagram or maybe split this diagram into chunks and um, show how these components are inter interrelated. But anyway, until then, until I figure that out, I'm just going to um, clean up the code as best I can. Hey there, Rally Monkey. Haven't seen you in a while. How's it going? Dry as Jans. All right. So let me start at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the easy ones, which are these ones that appear both client, or admin, and server. Right. So these are admin messages. They're different in that uh, we trust the admin a lot more, and so I think I'm gonna want to have a slightly different macro. I think I can just mix them in here and keep them keep them in alphabetical order. Right. For now. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep them separate. I'll keep them separate. I'll, I'll put the admin stuff up first. I'll call it admin. And this is notice. And it's the moderation system. All right. Okay. So we're going to remove notice. Remove notice. Let's make this macro, which means I need to go to evil macros.hpp. <laughs> I still chuckle when I see that name type sub it's going to be the pretty much the same i have an extra space in a couple places i don't need it so we'll call this register admin message but it has the same kind of signature and this never i don't need to have the the uh these either that one or the recapture one because recapture is only used if we don't not sure if we trust the user admin we always trust because they've given the um uh, the successful authentication response. They have to have the key for that to work. So I'm not too worried about having to um, do much more than that. Right, so this will make an alternative. And there's going to be a lot of similarities, so I'll probably split out the common parts of these two in a bit. Take the even pre-check, blah, blah, blah. So client... It's going to be admin, and I'm going to strike out get username from message. Do that. Okay, and then do I need, do I need to do anything else here? Yeah. Well, I think the declare is the same for the admin as it is for the non-admin, so I think I'll keep that. Hey, Adriv, which ID do you recommend? I recommend VS Code. It's awesome because you get the same experience between Windows, Linux, and Mac. There's all sorts of 
extensions that have been written for any kind of thing you might want in your IDE. And with the base platform, you don't get any extensions, and it's, it's lightweight, so you just pick the extensions you need. So there you go, pay me Microsoft, I just uh, advertised VS Code. Anyway, I like it a lot. There are only a few things that uh, are lacking, in my opinion. Like in the debugging, some of the advanced features are missing. And so for that, if you're a Windows developer, I recommend having, um, since it's free, Visual Studio Community, since it integrates with VS Code for your build tools anyway, it also provides like a backup IDE to um, handle the, the advanced debugging cases once in a while that you might have to do. All right, so yeah, I need to refactor these boilerplate functions too at some point. Especially now that I'm making a copy of this with some alterations. So we'll paste that. Let me collapse the old one so it doesn't get in my way. So yeah, these oh, there'll be there'll be three of these boilerplate functions are gonna, gonna have a lot in common. So this is admin. And I declared that, didn't I? Just did that, yes. Okay. So it just doesn't have a get username for message. Okay, so what's different for an admin? This is the same. This is different. This is just, this is the same always. So this will use this in place of client ID. Whoops. There and there. Whoops. I had the wrong thing in my, in my clipboard. Clippy clipboard, okay. Try again. Paste, and then actually this I don't want to be changed. Am I gonna need IP address? Probably not. Let's remove it. And username, I think we're not gonna, not gonna bother about that. Actually, let me think about this. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're not gonna have a username per se. Actually, so then this one is different up here. So the command factory is different. Actually, you know what I can do? I can just pull that out of the message. Yes, indeed. I can see message. You just trust the admin, right? If there is a username, they put it in the message. I like that idea a lot. I've been trying to make a hello world, but it needs a lot of JSON. You can't fig find any tutorial on the web. Well, I made a hello world. You can look at that. This 30 minute video where I show exactly the same tools I use setting up a kind of a hello world kind of program. It also shows how to make a test framework for using a test driven development, which is an optional thing. I missed the cage thing. Oh, a little absent while washing, washing my stream, even washing my streams. Thank you so much. They've been pretty dirty. Yeah, washing them is a good thing. I've been adjusting to the fact that your one year old is officially, oh, congrats. Congrats, Riley Monkey. Walking around, huh? I hope you have everything baby-proofed. Have all the um, special covers for all the outlets and all that stuff. Put her in a cage. <laughs> yeah, Dreef, tell me, let me know if that works out for you. If not, let me know. I can always record a different one. Maybe something that's a lot simpler without the test-driven stuff. It shouldn't, like, once you get a Hello World program working, it get, kind of gives you that confidence, so... I think that's important to get that initial confidence that that you can, that your tools work, that you understand how to use them, that there are no bugs in the setup. So yeah, I hope you get that working. Do you need MinGW? No, I use MinGW only for my Git client because it um, when you download Git for Windows, one of the popular distributions of that is the MinGW one, but that's that's only for Git. I don't use any, any other MinGW stuff. Um, yeah, VS Code itself is all on the Electron platform, which is using Chromium, which is that cross-platform browser. How do you compile a code? I use Visual Studio Community, but with the I also use CMake, which is a cross-platform, cross-tool framework, and that is capable of understanding a lot of different tools, so I happen to have Clang as well as Visual Studio on this machine. But if I had GCC, it would probably add it to the list here. It kind of auto-detects what you have. Or you can um, let CMake guess, which I guess is kind of like telling Google that you feel lucky. But yeah, with a framework like CMake, it works with many different tool sets. And so I have 
you know, Visual Studio Community is the one I use. And that 30-minute video kind of talks about how things are compiled and built, how, how things are set up with CMake. CMake is a bit of a learning curve, though, so you might want to um, set up CMake, I mean, set up a build system that's uh, simpler, like maybe a GNU make file, or maybe just make a Visual Studio project and uh, build with Visual Studio, even if you do editing in VS Code. Uh, there's no, no, and maybe it's a little clumsy, but if, if you have trouble getting the build system set up, it can be kind of a blow to confidence. So I would um, try to try to get it set up right. Client ID I got rid of. Username I'm getting rid of as well. So this is still the same. Sort of. You can I kind of do both at the same time. So I set VS Code up with a CMake Tools plugin. And then when you do that, the moment you make um, a CMake lists for your project, and then you open the whole thing in VS Code, VS Code says, oh, you have a CMake list. Let me integrate it for you. So it'll pop this up. It'll ask for a kit. And then now when I, um, I have this tab here, no, not that one, this one, where I can um, build, configure, run CMake again, and then build actually it's smart enough to know how to run the build system that CMake generated. So in this case, it's running uh, Ninja, which is using VS Code, I mean, a Visual Studio Community's um, compiler and linker. So, yeah. Let's see, I think this is fine. Okay, this is removed. Do we need the IP address in append? Command. I don't think we do. Okay, so if in the event that it is, we'll get it from the message. How about that? Maybe just remove it. No, I want a common factory because it's simpler that way. So we'll just do that. I'll remove the IP address. I'll remove that. And that'll be that. So if there is an IP address, it'll be built into the message. Let me think about that. Actually, I might want to pick that up for some reason. Eh, if I do, I'll do it later. Okay. Oh, that's okay, Adrif. I understand. I think someone was saying yesterday, most people who watch your typical Twitch streams are not English native speakers, so it's more than 50% at least, so I understand. No problem. Okay, so would this have three arguments now? It does. This fourth one is old. Yeah, okay. So we're just tunneling through the uh, fact that there's an instance ID and the uh, client ID is... Actually, why is that? Hmm. Oh, that's the original server, original client. Okay, got it. Does not take one argument, it doesn't. Oopsies. Did I mess up the evil macro? It looks okay to me. Oh, right, it's just, I think it's just complaining that that's not a member, okay. So we're good. I just haven't converted this notice over, so that is in moderation. Okay. On notice, so these are the old functions, and I'm going to replace them. Oops, so get rid of these old bookmarks that I have lying around. And I need to find some prototypes, so... Oh, wait a minute, no, I'm using a macro for this, right. So these get replaced with this nice macro here. Notice that I can remove these. On notice, on notice, on notice. There we go. And oh look, we collapse those two together. Okay, in the CPP file, right? It's this pattern. There's a uh, there's a check followed by a make command now. And where does this belong? After get my tickets. Okay, so right down here. We're at the correct place. So this is notice. 
check, and then notice make command. Okay, and then I'll bookmark where that is and I'll go find on notice. Okay. Looks like there is no check. There's no check at all. And these are all boilerplates, so I can delete them. There is only the make command. Okay, good. So this is the make command part. But extract that out. And uh, bookmark where that is, and then I'll go back. I'm using the bookmark plugin, which is kind of cool. If there are two places in the code, and I want to jump quickly back and forth between them, really, really handy. So this is always return true. And this is always to return the this one command that the, the um, message generates. Okay. So then I can jump forward to here and then just delete this. Then jump back. Okay. Build. You notice how it built really quick? Because I was smart today, and I built once before the stream started, which got everything in the cache. Oh, but I didn't run this. Okay, I'm, so maybe I'm not so smart. Not as smart as I want to be. This is having a bug these days, by the way. If you've seen the last couple of streams, every time I make a little change, it um, blanks out all the previous test results, which is really annoying. I just wanted to, I wanted to keep the previous test results and um, then I can know which test to rerun if it fails. But they'll pass. We're good. So watch what happens. If I just make some kind of change, doesn't matter, matter what kind of change, the moment I build, it's like, oh, I don't know what happened with all those tests. You probably have to run them again. I'm like, ah. Why do you do this to me? See, that's maybe one downside a drive to the uh, VS Code environment is that um, you have a lot of extensions, and so they are developed by by sometimes different people than the than the editor itself, and so sometimes you get kind of weird bugs that happen when one like let's say the VS Code updates, but the extend the VS VS Code updates, but then the extension doesn't, and there's some kind of bug, and then the update to has to be done to the extension as well, and then the bug goes away. And so that intermediate time, you kind of struggle, or you, maybe you, you don't tell it to update until both sides are matching, and that's not always not, you, it, it's hard to know when to do that, unless you know that there's a bug. Okay, let's check this in. Checking it in. So we're introducing an admin message in. Okay, so update notice client message handlers and introduce a variant of the message handling boilerplate for use with admin messages. This is lo a longish line, so let me break that up. There we go. Much better. All right. Next. Next, we shall work on. Oh, I kind of want to get reduce these to the bare minimum, so. Does this change configuration? I think change configuration is a, is a client request. Let me make sure. Okay, that's maybe why I got confused because it's also an ex an executor function. It's a different component of the system. Okay, but here's the usual trio, right? Yeah, so we can fix this. So remove it here and take, yeah, remove it here. So it's change, well, before I remove that, let me copy paste that and now take change configuration and paste it there and it's the config subsystem. Then remove that and we'll go to, uh, actually the find will help, right? Go here. And do I have any other, no, I don't have any other new style handlers here. So let me take from moderation where I just was, and then I can copy that and paste it here. 
Maybe there should be a plugin for VS Code where you can delegate updating everything. Yeah, and it would be nice if there was a curator of versions of things that who tracks what breaks. So yeah, uh, it was like a week or two ago, all of the debugging just broke. And it's, I had to roll back the version of VS Code to continue working. And it turned out it was uh, something that they changed and they broke something. And then when the uh, authors of the, I think it was the, the um, this plugin, the Google Test Explorer, it's either that or this or uh, CMake tools. One of them uh, updated to uh, fix a bug. This bug fixes all the time. It's just bug fix. Uh, bugs hit you harder if the system is split between the main IDE and the extensions, and they're developed by different people. Uh, the quality of the teams who develop each of these extensions is different. You know, maybe um, it would be smart. For me to stick with the down with the with the plugins that have a lot of downloads and stars on them, like probably better support. Stuff like this one only has six thousand downloads, so maybe it's not so stable. I don't know. Quality standards are not high enough to like prevent things from really going badly if there are bugs right now. We always have Visual Studio, like the main Visual Studio, as a backup, I guess. Although, um, the other day when I switched to that, I ran into another problem with it. <laughs> I'd never fix, finished that, fig figuring that out. One of, one of the libraries I use doesn't build correctly in Visual Studio. I think it was this VXCVBN. It didn't, it didn't know how to run its dictionary builder tool correctly. Some CMake problem, I think. Which is, means it's probably my problem, because I think I made that change. Anyway, config, right? So, right, I need the prototypes for, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here, I need these prototypes. Let me put these off into a new file. This is my poor man snippet, okay? Poor man's snippet tool. And then I can take that. Actually, let's put like a marker here. Type. Actually, let's. A really multiple select doesn't work inside of this kind of file. Oh, no, it does. This. So type. So I can easily replace it. Okay, there's my snippet. One of these days I'll learn how to make a proper snippet. And then in config, so let me go to here. And then here's where the snippet, so to speak, goes. All right. Oh, this has, okay, this has a helper that it uses. Okay, hold on. I guess this snippet that I made has another problem where it's this, so let's call subsystem. That has to change each time. Okay, the type becomes um, change configuration. All right. Config. All right, so the start handling change configuration it's reused somewhere, or did I just bro broke it off? Oh no, I did. I, I did reuse it. Okay, so what does it do? Oh, okay. Hmm. It does the leader check. That's strange. This check, it, it doesn't. It only does half of the leader check. It does. It just says sees if we are the leader. It doesn't check if there is a leader. Wonder why. Hey there, Ken Comatics. Sorry, I didn't wave before. I didn't see you chat. The uh, the example that I that I recorded, it doesn't use MinGW to compile. It uses. I think I had it use Visual Studio. I might have used the MinGW for the command prompt just for convenience, but that's just the command prompt.
Oh, you, oh wait, no, you're talking about someone else's programming knowledge. Okay. Well, so mine, mine should be show, sh mine shows CMake with Visual Studio community. So compare that mine with that, I guess. All right. What I want to do, this is reused here. Maybe do the same thing as, as if the message came in. So that would be what? Looking up the message handler. Didn't I do that trick yesterday? I'm trying to remember where I did that. But I guess I can search for it. CMake, just be careful about CMake. It's um sort of a beast. It's um difficult to learn. But once you learn it, I think it's got some great advantages. But yeah. Okay, this client message handlers. Where did I use that? Ah, so I did it that way. I could probably still do it that way. So the trick would be where I did, uh, oh, I already lost my position. This one, where I do that. Here, I could substitute that in. So just pretend that we're doing change configuration. Okay, and new configuration is a parameter though. Okay, this is gonna be a little weird. How do I get that new configuration? It's a JSON value. Maybe that is the message. So it is maybe this, so new configuration. And I need to know a client. There is no client though. This is, okay, I need to think about this. Let me bookmark the position of this. Clearly the old bookmarks, so we don't need them. Okay. This one does that boilerplate pattern where if we're the leader, we append a command. And if we're not the leader, we forward it. But it's got some custom forwarding code in there. Um, hmm. Will I post my game on Steam? Well, it's a little, my game is a little bit different. So how best to show it? I don't have, okay, I don't have a good way to show it right now at this moment, but the, the game's multiplayer and the client is going to be in the browser. So what you would do to play the game is you just go to a web page and that would download the client into your browser. And then in, in that page, so to speak, there'll be a login and it'll connect to the server. So Steam could still be an option to kind of give it that Steam cred, but ultimately the game is mostly on the server side and the client is just a, a, a thin viewer tool for the game. Kind of like Realm of the Mad God, if you've seen that game. So, uh, Let's look that up, actually. Realm of the Mad God. So it is in Steam, but you could also just go to their web page. And when you do, it's, um, it downloads the client. I guess their client is Flash, but it doesn't have to be Flash. Um, their game is really on a server-side game. So um, if I put the client in Steam, it's really just packaging up a web a web page uh you probably like the way vs code does it with electron and then publishing that on steam so i might do that i'll think about that i've heard that that can get make the game more legitimate that until you do that people are like oh it's a web page it's not really a game it's not in steam i'm not going to play it <laughs> so we'll see okay so yeah this is using slightly different machinery where instead of a, a, a message coming in that we forward, it's actually making the new message on the fly here. I mean, I could do the same thing. So it's this part of the message goes here, right? It's just that it doesn't come from a client, so I don't know what... So this didn't just... This bo didn't bother forwarding anything, and this didn't use it. What if I just use dummy stuff here? 
what does it need? It needs a web socket. So we can maybe pass null. And then what? An empty client record? Sure, why not? So we'll pass null pointer, because <laughs> we can. And then we'll just make a dummy client record. And that will forward it correctly, right? And I don't need that. And this becomes... Uh, this code here goes in the new place. So I have this bookmarked, right? No, I don't. Bookmark that and then jump to the new code. Down here. Here's the make command. So paste there. Okay. So new configuration. Okay, bookmark, go back. How do they get new configuration? Okay, it's just given in. So it would be in the message configuration. All right. So const auto new configuration equals message. Uh, what is it called? New uh, configuration. Okay. That makes everything compile. Okay, now this boilerplate we remove, right? So. Instead, we do this, return that in a vector. And then same goes here, only it's a start configuration, and that gets removed. Okay. And there was no check, so, I'll, so I don't need to do anything in check other than return true. And then the old stuff can fall away. In fact, this, that, that did the same thing. All right, so that gives me some confidence that I'm doing the right thing here. And then just build it and give it a try. Oh, you'll play it? Cool. I should be starting to build the game next month. So one unique thing about the game, there's a link to my ideas. It's there. So one idea I have... One hook to make the game unique and stand out, get noticed, and hopefully get successful is to tie the game heavily to Twitch stream. So part of that is I want to evolve the game live on stream. So I want to, I'm trying to get the platform of the game up and running so that people can log into it before there even is a game. And then starting hopefully in April, I'll be actually making the game so that if you're logged into the game, you'll see the ga game get made around you. That's the goal. I want to have the, uh, the game be persistent and evolving from day one. So almost like a creation story where you log in and it's just a black screen. Then as you're watching me on Twitch, actually add something to the game, you'll see it poof, suddenly appear on your client end. I think that would be awesome and would be a great uh, community integration between the game and Twitch and something not many other people do. So yeah, that's one of the goals because I've been learning to make a successful game, you need to get noticed, stand out, and ways to do that are to have hooks, which are ways to make the game unique. It will have a, a, big, en as map, a big enough map as I can make it. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's not going to be a static game, so it's going to be constantly evolving. So, you know, like, uh, uh, like for example, World of Warcraft, right, is all constantly changing. They have a patches every few months to add more content. I hope to do the same thing, but it all really depends on if I um, make it monetarily successful. If it supports me, I'll just do this for the rest of my life. Why not? I'll just continue adding content. It'll grow and um, add things over time. And But if it's not successful, I might have to scale back, get another job. And um, then I still want to work on the game. It'll just evolve a lot more slowly. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And I'm always open to feedback. If you guys tell me that's a stupid idea, do something else, then I'll consider it. Put it under consideration, all that stuff. Okay, that built, so let me run all my unit tests to make sure nothing broke. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We'll see how it goes. It shouldn't be long before I actually have some platform, and then the key will be, can I make it function while being evolved. I want to make it so that I don't have to keep taking the game offline to add stuff. All right, I did break something. Okay, yeah, 
th this kind of test of follower forwards, leader receives, it's, it's testing the boilerplate, which probably changed slightly. So let's go inspect that test. These, some of these tests probably I'll just remove because they're now redundant. Config 91. This is verifying that this is received. Hey there, bug found. How's it going? Bug found's a big supporter of the stream. You can tell because of the badges he's got. Hopefully your day's going well. I'm uh, still on, on the crusade right now to remove boilerplate dead code and clean up the code base, so. I broke something, though. Uh, red light. Let's fix the red light. So yeah, it should have type change configuration with the configuration. What did it actually have? Oh, it had extra stuff in it. That's probably, okay, so yeah. The boilerplate adds more stuff, which is fine. Client ID is whoever initiated the request. And what else did it have? That's the configuration, which is a big thing. Is that the only thing? Just the change ID? And the client ID? I got now. Let me try to remember which test that is because it blanks that. See? I hate that. That's a recent thing that changed. Probably a bug in this extension. I wish they would just fix it. I think we're good. I think we're getting the all green lights. Yay. Green lights, good. Red lights, bad. All green lights, cool. So we did more cleanup. Update change configuration message handler. And this for raft driven configuration changes. Simulate change configuration message receipt uh, with null client. Null client. Yeah, makes sense to me. The command doesn't need it. Boilerplate doesn't care, it just forwards a null. You have a feature request for JSON 64 bit in support? Okay. What did I have now, there now? I still need to fix that other bug I think you found. Which means that you picked a very good name for Twitch because you're finding bugs. Bravo. Uh, but I, I still have to fix your other bug with the uh, locale problem. You can have mobile support because that can bring in a lot of new users which aren't gamers in the first place. Yeah, the problem for me, I guess, is for mobile support, it's a much bigger UI challenge. I'll give it a shot. But I need to make a UI that's easy for you to press basically with just your two thumbs, right? All right, so, yeah, what do I have in here? I have size T, which for me is 64-bit, is but do you want explicit 64-bit instead of int and size T, I, I take it. For me, when I build it, it's six, int is 64-bit, but I, I understand that the actual size of int can vary on platform. So you want an ex you're basically asking for an explicit version of like in 64T, right? Just had paddings and margins done. <laughs> yeah, so we can add, I can add that. Should we do it the official way? So I don't remember, so I don't forget. I almost, I pretty much said, so I won't remember, right? Uh, so I won't forget. Let's go to my uh, JSON and open an issue. All oh, right, we also have this problem that playing with Skizzers pointed out. That's a corner case that he ran into, and my code had the same issue. So let's open a new issue. RuneScape has recently made their game mobile. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's check out Rune, how RuneScape did it. So let me write... I like to write down notes from viewers in my notes here, which you can, you can get to that with the today. Oh, you already linked it. Oh, we got linked because you included the word notes in your... Um, Chat, that's interesting. Uh, anyway, I like to write them down here so I can look at them later. So let's say um, add explicit 64-bit support. Uh, let's make it official official and do this. Put the date in. 
enough said, right? There we go. I think that will be issue number three. Three shall be the name, number of the issue, and the number of the issue shall be three. Don't save. Okay. Any special reason why I use Firefox? Ah, been using it for years. I don't use Firefox for debugging my game, though. I use Chrome because it's got, a, I think, a nicer set of tools. I should get this set up in case someone wants to see a demo, right? Anyone in here want to see a demo now? A lot of you might have already seen the demo, so you don't need to see it again. But if you, if you want to, I can show you the demo. Yeah, it's just old habits are, are difficult to get rid of, right? The demo, the demo uses a mock-up. That's weird. Why is it not showing up there? Did it not build? It's there. Oh, I don't know. I must have mistyped something a, a second ago. It takes a while to start up, but yeah. I um I, I really like the debugging tools in Chrome a lot better. And there is a plugin I even have here if I wanted to use a debugger for Chrome. So for normal browsing though, I'm just so used to using Firefox. Okay. Next thing I guess we're working on. While we're waiting for the demo to start up. Change player profile. Sounds good to me. So that's as an admin command. Or is it? Do I want to combine that with change profile? I might want to do that. Hold on. Let me first assume that I don't need to. Click. Change player profile is admin controls. Let me compare change profile. Uh, we don't want whole word matching. Actually, I, I do if I do check. There we go. So compare that. So bookmark there. Let me remove the old bookmarks. Oh, hold on. This I can delete now. No, no one's using. No one should be using that. Oh yeah. Let's delete it. It's dead code. Delete dead code. Yay. Delete the dead code. Yeah, okay. So. Change profile check. Oh, I already made that bookmark. Yeah, okay. And the other one was um, change player profile. Not full word. Actually, it's on ch on change. You'll find it. There we go. So what's the difference between that code and this code, this check here? Oh, this doesn't have a check. It's just do it. Okay, so what then, then it comes down to what's the difference between this command and this command, the command down here. Anything different? Oh, this one's from admin. Okay, that's one difference. Okay, we also restrict who can set it. So, yeah, I guess they're different enough that I want, I want to make a different handler. Okay. Thanks for the follow, Galley from Hell. Manual dead code elimination, yeah. I wonder if there's something I can enable with Visual Studio to tell, to tell me about dead code. I don't actually know of anything in Visual Studio that does that. Hey, did anyone say that they wanted to see a demo? If not, I'll just I'll just prep it to go, but I won't run it. I can wait until there are other people later. But yeah, the the de I can actually just show it and not explain it. I like the debugging tools because web sockets are really nice to see. So there you go. All mess all messages between the server and client if they go for web socket are really easy to debug in Chrome. Uh, but yeah, this is the mockup demo I made uh, a while back, just to uh, test out some.
of the things I want to use, like client side graphics and then the debugging tools and also demonstrate the back end. So yeah. I'll leave that up instead in case someone wants a more thorough explanation. Let's see. Admin player controls. Change player profile. Okay, that goes here. Do I already have any message handler? No, I don't. Okay, so here's the old code. Let me pull the um, macro from here. Uh-oh. The cat's unhappy about something. I hear meows. Meow, meow. Change player profile. And we can get rid of the old trio here. Okay. Did I bookmark? Yes. So I need to check. Oh, no, I had I had my nifty new uh, template for this, right? What's the reason behind the server not being Node.js? Uh, because I've worked on C++ for so many years that I'm comfortable with it. So I, I a lot, write, write a lot of stuff in C++. Yeah, like Nui said. That's a personal preference. There's no reason you couldn't do it in Node.js. Cat's unhappy about something. Okay, that needs evil macros, right? Oh, hold on, is evil macros being picked up by this? How did how did it get picked up here? That doesn't include it. I don't understand something. IntelliSense is confused. But then I'm also confused why, how, where does it pick up the definition of my macro? I guess I can just search for evil macros, HTTP, and see what, what includes them. Oh, yeah. Well, how come I didn't run into this before? The only thing that includes them are this CPP and auth. Weird. Okay, so... Where are, where are, are all the places where I use this? I use it in, con yeah, okay, well I should just do the right thing. I need to include the header that defines those macros there, and here I have no idea why, how that compiled before, and in profile. All right. Yeah, I say I'm experienced and then I make I make mistakes a lot. <laughs> okay, this needed needs it too. See now it's now IntelliSense is happy. If IntelliSense is happy, I'm happy. Okay, all right. Here's where I wanted to put the uh boilerplate. Paste there and this is the subsystem. This is the type. All right, and then this part here is, so this is the old way I did a message handler. So there's, the part highlighted is the part that's different for every message. Everything else is boilerplate. And so I, I, I'm converting to this new style where just the piece that makes the command goes in one function. And if there is a check before this, we have other logic, but here I don't need to do it. So it's just return true. So these two functions combined should be less code than this old, this old way of doing it. Why are changes? Oh, it was just convoluted before. Okay, let's get rid of it. <laughs> oh, did I, I messed this up. It's not that it returns false, it returns an empty vector there and then this returns change profile. 
And the changes we pick up where? That's message changes. I think that's I think that's right. Did you do the WebSocket? Yes, I did. That was a fun little project. So, and that's in my GitHub if you want to take a look at it. And if you want to see me actually implement that, hold on a second, I'll find that out. WebSocket. I did it way back on stream 28. <laughs> that was way back in July last year. How long did it take me to, to do it? Okay, I did the initial implementation of WebSockets in a couple days, but obviously I had bugs since then. So if you were to look at the change log for WebSockets, you'd probably see a lot of changes. We can look at it. So that is WebSockets. Oh, it was just there. Cat's unhappy. I think the cat's unhappy because it's raining outside and he wants to go outside. Yeah, July, and then, yeah, a lot of fixes and handling different corner cases since then. But yeah, that was fun. It depends on a few things, though. Did I write down the dependencies correctly? I didn't. <laughs> so th right now, I'm, I'm a little bit bad in doing documentation. So this says you just need CMake and some kind of tool chain. But if you look at the CMake lists, the telltale sign that there are dependencies is this link this target link libraries. So these dependencies are, looks like, yeah, there are five other libraries I wrote, which are also in my GitHub that you would need. And system abstractions is the big one that does, um, an abstraction over the operating system stuff that changes between Windows and Linux and Mac, like sockets and uh, clipboard and other things. So that's a big library. These other ones I also did on stream. They're pr relatively small. So base64 encoding, hash functions. Okay, the HTTP is, um, it just needs that for the web client interface. So it uh, doesn't need a whole, mu whole lot from that. And then UTF-8 is uh, Unicode. That was fun. I just checked that in, right? No, I didn't. I built it, but I didn't, I didn't test it. No, I, I built it and it doesn't work yet. <laughs> Admin player, oh, did I screw up something? When I, yeah, I did. I have an, under, I have an errant underscore somewhere. Hold on. Oh, it's it's here. It's complaining. Line ninety two. Oh, do I not have that in the macro? Probably. Um, yeah. So that's part of the evil macros. I don't have correctly done. Here. Yeah. So I'm missing missing one admin player controls all right working now run the test yeah i try to do tests for every reusable component it's just a habit i, tr I try to stick to even though i think um there's a cost. It took longer to write it. There's maintenance. It's not written completely clean. It needs to be cleaned up, I think. If you look at the tests, you'll probably find that the tests are kind of messy. But I like, oops, I just ran it again. I like to have the confidence um, that if I make a change, I can run the test again, like I'm doing now. So confident enough to check this in if all, all the tests pass. Actually, this should be separately checked in. Evil macros. Handle admin player controls. Subcomponent. It's not handle, it's support. Commit that, and this is all 
Okay, no, this is separate. So this is include evil macros from um, all the places we need it. Right. So include evil macros from sub subcomponents needing it. All right. But this is just update. Change player profile message handlers. Okay, next. Current players. I think this is one of those that is subtly different. There's a get players and then there's a... Oh no, current players is different from get players. I think this one is um, not a client message. So if I search for current players, that's in the tests. Right, it's part of an announcement between servers, so I can't touch that one. That stays alone. In fact, the raft is the same way. So these two are going to stay. Those are normal server-to-server -server messages that have nothing to do with client requests. These three, though, are, are going to go. Moderation ticket add note. So goes here, I guess. Kind of keep them in rough alphabetical order. Yep, okay. To moderation we go. Ticket add note. What's this get tickets doing here? Did I forget one? Oh no, that's an ad. I need to do that one too. I'll do that one in a bit. Take it add note first. All right. So go to the CPP. Near report issue. Okay. And then we'll paste the boilerplate stuff here. Minimal boilerplate. Although I'm, I'm thinking about making, this could almost be simplified with a macro as well. And that would help in case I add uh, change the parameters in some way. I I want to be careful about not overusing macros because they can make debugging painful. Take it add note is the type. Okay. So here's the ticket add note stuff. All right. So it's a simple thing again. Uh, we, it, there is no check when we just make a command. There's no check. It's just true always, and this one just makes it returns it makes and returns a command. These declare macros remind you of Windows. Yeah, it's kind of like that. That's sort of the goal. Is the thing the the things that the compiler needs to um, hook it in correctly. That's what I call boilerplate. It's the code that's exactly the same for every kind of message. I don't want to have to keep repeating it because if I make a change, let's say add a parameter to it, I have to add the parameter in like a hundred different places. But if it's in a macro, I only need to add it in one place. Okay, not don't delete that. Just the add note, and then it's it's a uh, two friends. Okay. Yeah. So I I'm probably I'm thinking about doing the same thing here because. These are copied everywhere. So what I would do here is something like define instead of de declare. So it would be like define make command, right? And then all I would need that's different from here is the type. So that would be uh, that and then the class, the subclass, I mean the, the, the subcomponent. And then probably, and then that would, it would just look like that. So the problem with doing that, why I'm sort of hesitating, is this macro is obscuring the actual argument list. So I just can't see the argument list anymore. I'd have to, I'd have to go into the macro to see it. And I don't know, that might, conf I don't know, if, I don't know if IntelliSense would be confused or the debugger, but I think I might be, because I'd be like, what is message? 
it's not anywhere here. It's hidden away by the macro. That's, that's the only reason I hesitate. But yeah, the flip side is if I ever add another argument to make command for, I'll have to do it, I'll have to add it for every single command. And, and the more commands I add here, the more painful it becomes, right? I already have almost, what, 20? Like 18 different kinds of commands that leverage these macros. So I'd have to like add it in 18 places and then spread out across like a dozen files. So it gets really painful. I'm on the, I'm on that edge right now of um, making this into a macro too. And this as well. And actually this whole thing could be replaced by a macro because a lot of them are going to just return true. So I could just have like define um, check always pass, right? <clears throat> Does not take much to confuse, yeah. I run into IntelliSense bugs all the time, which is why I'm really hesitant about overusing these macros. I probably will for these, though, because of the um, advantages. Avoiding pain. Because the interfaces, uh, these argument lists are, are a kind of interface, and that interface right now is not very stable. I added, I'm adding, I added that yesterday. That's how unstable it is. <laughs> so, yeah. And I did have to go through and add that in a bunch of places. The search tool in VS Code helped a bit, but it, you know, it, it wasn't as quick as going to one line of code and adding something. Right, so this was fairly painless. Update ticket add note message handlers. All right, getting there. Two more of these and I'll have all the server message handlers cleaned up. What if I just do these together? Take it cha change log change state. Take it change lock, take it change state. And then I can remove them from up here. Take it change lock, take change state. There we go. Oh yeah, you know what? I, I was a big believer in C++ CLI for a while. And then I, I actually found a post from someone at Microsoft saying that they never intended people to actually code new stuff in C++ CLI. It was intended only for as a temporary measure to get people onboarded onto .NET who came from C, C++. So it was like a glue layer that was only supposed to be temporary. And I'm like, oh, really? Then maybe I shouldn't be like making new stuff on it because they're probably not going to support it. And there were there were problems with it, right? Is the IntelliSense like a linter? It's sort of like a, a lint slash autocomplete slash pre-compiled check. So, for example, here it has a little red squiggly. And if I, if I hover on it long enough, it'll say at the bottom there, class moderation has no member. The one problem is that when I try to move into that, it disappears. Actually, what happens if I use scroll wheel? It doesn't, that doesn't work. But yeah, if, it'll like run the compiler in the background so if I have a syntax error, for example, if I do that, then it's running the compiler in the background, and eventually it says, oh, look, identifier is undefined. It, I never had to run the compiler. It ran it for me in the background and told me what the compiler probably would have told me. It's not, all, it's not perfect, and a lot of the times it messes up, but a lot of the times it's correct, and then it helps speed up development because you're like, oh, there's going to be a compiler error there because I dropped the S, right? So that's one thing it does. A light ver version of a Rust compiler. Since I don't know Rust, I'll just say 2H strike probably is right that I don't know. Okay, so tar tar da, 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 ticket change ticket change lock and change state. Moderation. Okay. They're probably down here, right? But what happened to add note? Oh, I, I did add note. So why did, why are these still here? Is that dead code? I'm confused. Oh, well, I kept the declarations. I forgot to delete them. That's what happened. They are dead. So that actually should have been, um, put into that last commit. 
and then less commit. Include these deletions. Commit. There we go. Then I need to fix that one up. Okay. Change lock. The other one's change state. I'll just type it. Change state. Okay, and then I can remove this now before I forget. Change lock. Change state. Look at all the stuff I get to delete. It's wonderful. The Rust compiler compared to other compilers takes its time from what you've heard. Well, but if what's the reward? Is it a good compiler? If it's a good compiler, I wouldn't mind waiting for a compiler. That's really good. If it if it if it takes time up front, but then saves me time down the road, that's worth it, right? Okay, so these it goes here. Copy and paste, and we'll do moderation for subsystem. Again, this is my poor man's code snippet <laughs> because I haven't um, learned how to do the real code snippets yet. Okay, so or again, it has a null check, no check required, and this is the actual thing to do. So we do that, return that in a vector. And this is the boilerplate can go. You can go, boilerplate. Goodbye. And I think it's going to be the same thing for the change state. I should have made the symbol easier to double click on. Okay. Yeah, same thing. The return true here, and then just the essence. Whoops. I misclicked again and I lost my place. Oh, there we are. The essence of what command to make goes here. LLVM backend. Yeah, a lot of things do. LLVM backend is pretty reusable. A lot of languages use it. C++, Clang uses LLVM backend as well. Okay, that goes. As long as there's nothing special that those do. Well, I guess I'll find out if um, it doesn't pass the tests, right? Okay. Be optimistic that it's, gonna, it's just going to pass. I'll get the commit set up. Update a ticket change lock and ticket change state handlers. It did get all green lights, yay! Okay, let's just push all that stuff. I think I'm done. So this is dead. I still need to do all of these though. They should actually go pretty quick. I could probably do them in batches. Oh, one that stood out for me just now was the uh, get tickets. That's, let's do that one. That's this one, right? Get tickets in moderation. So that, be that goes here now. So there's, it's like get my tickets, only it's from an admin. So it's getting all the tickets, or a subset of the tickets. I'll probably turn that into a search query, because right now it's returning everything. If the tickets, if they become a, a lot of tickets, that's a lot of data. <laughs> all right, so let's just find get my tickets. And it's going to go right above that, right? Yep. Paste. Get tickets goes for type. There is no check. It is oh, actually it's the other way around, right? This one returns no commands. This one, 
This is one of those commands that's just a query only, so there's no command to the game. So it's probably, yeah, it's just this. It's just a one-liner. That is correct, Ilman. It is just send the tickets, return false. Hey there, Mr. Muffles. No, I don't um, do everything perfectly. Only Mr. Muffles does that. You should watch his stream because he's perfectly developing a Metroidvania-style game in Unity. And he's got the perfect webcam set up now. <laughs> Did you stream last night, Mr. Muffles? I, I didn't see you stream, and I, I stayed up a little bit, but uh, I was playing Satisfactory, actually, having a lot of fun with that. And um, But I was kind of monitoring Twitch in the background. I didn't see you stream. Are you trying to reset your sleep schedule? Yeah, I should do that too. I, like I said, st st stayed up too long playing games, and uh, that's bad. Yeah. Well, when you do stream, I'd like to see it. Mr. Muffle's game is really cool in that it looks really polished, at least to me. It looks already really polished, even though he's still working on it. He, he's done a good job with the animations with the effects. Despite the fact that I guess the latest Unity updates kind of screw things up, which I've heard happens. I've heard other streamers complain about this. They update to Unity and then just things break. And always in the, the thought occurs in my head, head, like if I made a game engine, I would try I would try really hard not to let that happen because that, really, that would really disrupt a lot of users <laughs> just to have things break randomly. Hey there, user 335. You should follow him and watch his stream as well. He's got a unique game, also in Unity, where you don't really take an active part, but you uh, summon demons to do your bidding, and then they just kind of do their thing and they follow you around. And he's been working on that game for years, so it's already pretty polished. And um, there are other unique things about his stream. You should just check, it, check out these guys' streams. So, if you guys aren't following and watching each other's streams, you should. Because <laughs> you're both Unity game devs, and you're both working on games, so. And why is user335 not a VIP? That I could fix right away. I probably have one or two VIP slots left. Okay, we're all green lights, so we're going to check this in. Wait a minute, how come it didn't work? Am I out of VIP slots? I cannot let this stand? Let's see. Where would I find that in my dashboard? Uh, where would that be? Roles? Yes. Oh no! I've reached the maximum number. Okay, who's... Who can I strip the badge from who hasn't, never, who hasn't been here in a long time? Okay, I found someone. Okay, I've recovered one badge. How long does it take for me to add it? I don't. I don't know if it's immediate. Oh, there it was. There is. There it goes. So now user three three five has a re a recycled badge. Sorry, it might. You might need to clean it. It's a little. It might be a little dirty because it, it was belonged to someone else for a while. Well, I I want the VAPs to be recognized people who are regulars in the channel or who are other streamers. So I I. I recycled the batch from someone who's neither a streamer nor here regularly, so I won't say who it is. It, it all it all it really is is bling. It's just a badge, right? Okay, yes. I updated. What did I update? Get tickets. Message handler. Update. Not not past tense, but imperative. What's the best programming language? If I had to pick one, it would be Python, especially for teaching new. Do I have a? I don't have a learning command yet. But if you're learning programming, I think Python is all around the best language for learning. I play poker badly. Doesn't have a VIP badge either. I should fix that. You know, people come and go. So, who hasn't been here in a real long time? Hmm. Wish I could take away. No, that's a mod. Stream elements has to be a moderator. 
Okay, I found one. Okay, we're going to recycle that one too. Because that belongs to I play poker badly. Does the follow which command? I don't think that works. But you've been following... Oh, it doesn't tell me. I thought it did. What's that emote? Oh, that's one of your emotes? That looks cool. I don't recognize that one. I do recognize... Uh... Hold on. Hold on a second. This one. I like people's emotes when they are tied to what they're developing, and I don't have one yet because I don't have any content for my game. But when I do, I think I'm going to repurpose my emotes to uh, link into my game. So Mr. Muffles, uh, Mr. Muff21 is like a little little uh, character from his game. So, All right, so back to work. You know, I think I'm ready to switch gears a little bit because... This is good enough where I can do the rest of the stuff offline some other time. So the other thing I wanted to work on really badly was to clean up the unit tests because they are a piece of work. They are um, incredibly sloppy right now. I should maybe start with one of these that are a little bit nicer. So what I want to do is pick out stuff like this, which is boilerplate. I don't like it. Like, if I looked for this message alone, I'll probably see that a quadrillion times. Okay, only 77 times. That's 76 times too many in my book, so. Auto hotkey? That's not a bad language. A lot of things, a lot of, a lot of useful things you can do with auto hotkey. COBOL. COBOL, you'd be surprised. I don't know if it's still the case, but like 10 years ago, if you knew COBOL, you could, you could make a lot of money because banks really needed people who knew co COBOL because it's a uh, language for banking, right? Ancient language, but just uh, not enough people knew it. Oh, not saying it's been falling forever. Actually, do I have... Do I have a mod tool that'll show, show that to me? Um... Not anymore, because I left my chat. I'm surprised this isn't built into the chat tool I use. Maybe it's only a mod command. Let me try it myself. Uh, user 335 knows how to do it. Maybe I don't have it um, enabled in uh, stream elements. Hold on a sec. Sorry for the distraction. I just it's being it's being difficult today. This would be a default command, correct? Oh, it's just not enabled. Okay. There, it's enabled now. <laughs> Let's try can you can we try it again? Try it again, not Zane. Try follow age again. I had it turned off for some reason. Two months is a long time for me. My stream isn't that isn't that old. Oh no, that's user three three five. Okay, how come it's not working for not saying? Is it on cooldown? I think it's on cooldown. What's the cooldown set to? The cooldown is set to fifteen seconds for a user, five seconds global. They gotta wait five seconds. Yeah, it's a it's a rate limit thing. There we go. See, not saying I think is um, the champion. Three months, twenty one days is a pretty long time for my stream. Yep, get close. Bug found is close. All right. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start by making a helper for this. I had another helper, and. Oh, look at that. So, Mr. Muffles is not that far behind not Zane in followage. Yeah. You guys all discovered me around the same time, then. That's cool. Common. 
Right, so in the common framework for the tests, I have these helpers. So I have this authenticate as admin. I want to add a new one. Uh, let's pin that. Want to add a new one for this kind of a thing. Actually, it's this entire thing, right? Oh, no, just this one. Our Irish John, he's an excellent streamer as well. If you haven't seen Irish John stream, you should. He's also a Unity game dev, and he's making a pirate PvP battle game. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to make a new helper here. And it's not authenticate. No, it is authenticate. Actually, it goes in two pieces, doesn't it? So instead of an add connection, there was a special version of that, right? Right, add. There's an add admin connection. So let's do an add peer connection. Uh, which video? Which video are we talking about? Oh, you can't one hour trying to configure CMake and read almost three tutorials? Yeah, that one. What you did you look at that one yet? CMake is it can be a real real problem for some people. So I only hesitantly recommend it. You um there's a steep learning curve for it. But something simple like Hello World you should be able to get pretty well. C C P V properties. Oh, there was another trick that I had to do for that. Um let me, let me see if I can find it. This is what you should have when you set it up with the CMake tools. If it's your configuration provider, then it will have filled in all this stuff for you. If it didn't, that might be that might be the issue. Yeah, it's a what it is, it's a VS code configuration. It, it's it's a configuration for this specific plugin, the CC++ plugin, right? This con this plugin or extension uses this configuration file which it stores in your VS, .vs code. And the CMake tools extension plugs into that plugin. So this is where bugs happen, right? You have extensions changing the configurations of other extensions. But when it works, it, it's, it becomes the configuration provider of the other plugin, and then fills in all this other stuff for you, which is sort of that magic. If it all works, it works. If it doesn't work, then it's broken. <laughs> Add peer connection. Let's go to this. So it's a similar thing. Auto. Common. Actually, it's going to be look exactly the same on the outside. That's weird. Excuse me. Okay, IntelliSense just needed to catch up. So the difference here is um, the body of the uh, message. I think I want that instance number to be um, something we can pass in. So instance ID, put that there, and let's default it. Let's default it. Uh, 1337, why not? ID, oh, what happened here? That old? That's old. Cool. Now I should be able to use that in all of the places where I was formerly doing this. Uh, this is true. So instead of add peer, uh, add peer is add connection. It's add peer connection. And I can be explicit here. One three three seven. Like that. So I can go through all of the places where I have infra hello in tests and fix them. All right. Yep. So it looks like I used the same number almost everywhere. Probably because it was copy pasted everywhere. So here we're cleaning up, cleaning up time, code cleanup. I'm taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines and making them one and making it pro probably easier to understand if you know what a peer is in this context. A peer is just another server. 
because these are all testing a server, right? So it's pretending that another server has connected to us. They all, if they all use 1337, what I'll do is I'll just remove the explicit thing with one search replace. I think they all do, actually. Okay, let's get rid of... Actually, that it goes there, and then I can remove that, right? Oh, and that should be using add admin connection. Hmm, what's the false for? I think that's because it's not a... Not a private connection. I need to do the same thing for orchestrator connection. Oh yeah, if you're missing the CMake t extension, you probably need that. If you're using CMake. But it's, for, it's the vector of bool one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we can take a look at it if you have it in Git, or if you have a... Yeah, I guess that would be the best thing, if you have it in your Git. We can take a look at it. I can clone it and see if I can debug it. I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay, I was searching, right, these ones. Okay, I did that one. Oh, no, that's, okay, these are different. Those are orchestrator ones. I'll get to that in a minute. Looks like it has the same repeated pattern. Oh, look at that. That one's different. Oh, without, that's a special one. Okay. But those are all, okay, there, this one. Oh, and this is using the really old style. So um, let me not touch that one for for quite yet. I'm not ready to, to hit, hit those up. I'm not ready to mo modify those yet. So yeah, you. Y what happens if you don't have Visual Studio Community installed is when you open VS Code and it sees a CMake, it'll say select a kit and you won't see Visual Studio Community. Um, so. If you don't even get that far of selecting a kit, then it's not a Visual Studio thing. Hey there, Fletcher Codes. How was your stream? I'm presuming that you were streaming. I still need to work on that, the, the double notification thing. Maybe I just turn off the host one and just keep the raid one? Hey, Fletcher Codes. I'll give him my little wave. Clippy, that's a nice emote. I like that one. Right now I'm just refactoring old unit tests. All these all this common stuff like this, these lines now get replaced with one line I have in my clipboard. Boom. Clean. And this thing too, right? Although I have to be careful I do it in the right place. There. Looks like I use 1337 for the um mocked peer all the time so i can probably just uh, remove that number yeah this is done so many times but if i screw up once it will cause a, a unit test failure so got to be careful Finishing up a small tool that updates a desktop background with a random unsplash image and then went back to your chatbot. Oh, you have a chatbot? Cool. So I made a chatbot as well. That's that's fun stuff. You get to uh, think of creative ways to integrate chat with whatever else you're doing. I'm going to be doing that for my game at some point. I'll have a chatbot in the channel or some kind of bot in the channel that'll be actually driven by the game server. Uh, to make the um, channel more um, integrated with the game. I don't actually know Unsplash. Hit Obstacles, Desktop App was Learning Project. Oh, okay. Cool. Hopefully you're having fun. Um, This stuff was setting the client ID. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. Um, and I'll address that later. Right now I'm just on a crusade here to remove all of these infra hellos because they are all oh this one's special it's instance 85 this time i guess i was in a 85 kind of mood at that point 
The numbers are only significant because they have to match in more than one place. So I'm explicit a lot of the time because I want to make sure that they match. Like, okay, so in this file, I was in an 85 mood, obviously. Okay, that's the old style. I need to clean that up again in a different pass here. Just one pass at a time. I think I might have got, got them all. Actually, there's a surefire way to find this. If I look for ID Realm. Looks like I missed a bunch. Oh, right, th those, that's the old style. This one is, I missed this one. Oh, and I don't have that in my clipboard. Well, let's just write it. It's add peer connection. One, three, three, seven. All right. You have several ideas. You enjoy working with APIs. Cool. And the Twitch a the Twitch APIs are kind of challenging in the fact that they're not documented very well, right? I'm presuming it was a Twitch bot. Because chatbot could actually also, it could be a Discord or it could be YouTube or something else, I guess. Okay. I think we'll do that in the second pass. Make sure I didn't break anything. So it should still build and I should my test should still run. Find out. Hopefully I don't see red. It's like I'm a gambler. I'm like, green, baby, green. No red, no red. <laughs> All right, good, 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 good. So that deserves a check-in, I think. Uh, 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 okay. Chatbot? Oh, cool. A Twitch chatbot, right. You're using a library for the IRC communication? Okay, cool. Well, thanks for the follow. I can't say your name because I don't know how to pronounce it, but thank you. Yeah, uh, stream elements doesn't show the alternate name, so I don't know how to s how to pronounce that name. I apologize. Let me uh, check this in. This is adding a helper function called add peer connection. So this is test refactoring. Add that helper. Okay. Next round. I want to I want to eradicate all the ID realms. So that is still done here. Okay, now this is the real code. So I can't touch that. The real code as in not the test code. And this is what This is the actual helper itself. Okay, these these are where it's tricky because it's using the old the old way of doing it. So the old way was we would um predefine this WS client. And do one uh, one thing in this setup was to actually make a connection server client pair. So I had refactored that away at some point to make it um, uh, look a lot nicer. It was it was just add connection, right? This is broken up into two parts, though. I guess we, I guess we just put it here. So um, copy from somewhere else. One of these guys, right? So if it's that, I think I can just do that and remove that, and remove that. And then this changes slightly. That becomes, um, let's see if I get this right, peer dot WS server. Okay, so it's not so bad. Let me just try this one change, and if that works, then I know what to do for all the other ones. What am I tidying up? So the unit tests for one component of my game server. So the game server has all these different pieces in it. So the coordinator piece is the one I've been working on a lot lately. And so its unit tests have been getting really messy. So I'm going through them now and um, cleaning them up. I want to get them so that all of the test files, so to speak, are a lot shorter than 900 lines. They should be really, you know, Three, four hundred lines, if 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 that. So yeah, cleaning up the coordinator. Coordinator is a component that it goes between the web interface, web sockets, and the rest of the game. 
And the most important components are the uh, raft server, which uses the um, consensus algorithm to replicate uh, commands. Commands being um, requests to change the game state. So the re replication system, and then the executor, which is actually taking replicated commands and using them to change the entity component system, which doesn't exist yet, but when it does, uh, it'll be changing that, and then that feedback goes back to the coordinator to tell um, the uh, client that, oh yeah, you did move north or south, or you did strike the uh, enemy you were swinging at, that kind of thing. So it's a messenger, really. So a big part of the coordinator is routing messages. So I did that earlier. I had this old style of registering a message handler for a certain kind of message. And I kind of I cleaned it up a little bit in that instead of having to list it in uh, multiple tables here, it's just one macro. And then that macro takes care of registering um, just the pieces that are not boilerplate. So it was, it's simplifying the, the message handling registration to one line and then having common boilerplate code just down here which is still messy I have to clean it up but this code is like the same for every kind of message so rather than copying that uh, uh, 20 30 places it's in one place and then these macros call that factory so to speak which takes two non-boilerplate functions and wraps them with boilerplate and then inserts them into the uh, message map this message map is pretty simple, um, like this one, for example. It's just a map from strings to handlers, and a handler is just a function that you call. When a message comes in, it comes in from a WebSocket, and it's already been identified by the boilerplate, like which client it came from, and then this is the raw message. All messages are JSON values, so. Um, the uh, It's plugged into the map this way, but there's a lot of boilerplate, and this macro here, and this factory function, so to speak, produces boilerplate, or, and so that all all the common stuff for for you, so that the um, I I only need to when I add a command, I only need to provide these two functions, which are not boilerplate. So, for example, uh, what's a good one? How about login? Actually, login's bad because it's too complicated. How about um, change profile? Change profile. Where is change profile? Oh, I'm in the test. That's why I don't see it. I need to go to the real code. Change profile. So it's it's now um, two parts. There's a, a check to see if we're allowed to make a change to the game. And this checks for changing profile are if you're not an admin, You'd better be logged in, otherwise you're, you, we hung, hang up on you. you better be registered or we ignore the message. Otherwise, we get the client ID from your client record. And then the other check is if you ask to change your email, we check to see if the email is acceptable. If it's not, we tell you we can't change it because it's a bad email address. If the check passes, then the, it does some more boilerplate stuff, and it comes back into the make command. And this is just constructing an object, this change profile, which records what we want to change. And then that, that gets forwarded through the replication so all, uh, every server sees it, and then every server will execute it. And um, if it succeeds, it comes back here. Actually, if, even if it fails, it'll be executed, and there'll either be an error or there won't be. If there's no error, we announce the player change to the anyone who subscribed to it. And uh, we go in and for certain kinds of errors, we uh, will ban the user. No, hold on. This is if there was no error and the change was that the player became banned, then we ban the user, right? Otherwise, if the change was accepted, we will um, let them know that it was success. And one kind of change could be that they changed their name. In that case, we have to update their client record. If there's an error, we tell them that it was an error. So now when I add a command to the game, I can just focus on three aspects of it. A check to make sure we actually want to create a command in the in the journal, create the command in the journal, and then handle um, the execution of that command, whether it succeeded or failed. So yeah, that's what I'm working on today. Reducing boilerplate, I did that in for the commands, and now I'm doing it for the tests. Mostly in the tests, is just repeated stuff, copy pasted. Like this is just copy pasted everywhere.
these these five lines, these, uh, how many lines are there? Seven lines are everywhere. So I really want that to just be one line. Because number one, it's hard to it's hard to read this and understand what it's doing. It's much easier to go into um, something like and see that. Okay, we're adding a peer connection. And if you really want to know what that number is, you follow that. It's the instance ID. Actually, I should rename that. It, it should be the peers instance ID. Um, that, I think, is much easier to read than than that garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's written from scratch. I mean, how many hours have I been streaming? I've been streaming for 542 hours, so... that You get a lot of code after four, 542 hours, so... From time to time, you have to go back and clean it up. So what I found is every 200 hours or so, I've accumulated too much crud that I need to go then spend about you know, 10, 12 hours to clean up. That's not a bad ratio, right? 10 hours for every 200 hours development. Is instance ID inspired by a particular streamer? No, but maybe there's a joke there. Um, er everything you see in my code is written from scratch with the exception right now of, uh, oops, uh, cancel. Exception of three things. So I did not write the password strength estimator. That was written by someone else. So I used this library to um, check for obviously weak passwords. Uh, we, we reject them. We, we ask you to use a strong password, please. Another thing I did not write was Zlib. That is written by a brilliant guy named Mark Adler. And it's very well known. It even has an RFC written about it. So that's for compression. Another one I did not write is LibreSSL, which is a very important library. That is, okay, That's it's hard to see that, but it's a free BSD fork of OpenSSL. So this is encryption. So all the security stuff, signing certificates, um, verifying signatures, um, making secure connections between servers and clients. That's LibreSSL. I did not write that. Uh, but everything else, yeah, I wrote pretty much myself. Oh, in Scratch. Ah, ah, ah. Instead of from Scratch? Nope. That would be painful to write everything in Scratch. <laughs> Got me. Do you not work offline in the project? I do. So perhaps this number is... A little low. I've been trying to do most of my development time on stream though, so if I were to give a guess, if I included off stream hours, it's probably more like 700. But you know, it's not double that, certainly. That's actually my goal is to get eight hours a day, but I've only been doing four hours of streaming and then maybe an hour more. And I really should track that. You know who's really good at tracking their time is Tim Bidet. Uh, what's his? Okay, I I don't I I don't know how to, I don't remember how to spell his name. I would give him a shout out, but he's another streamer on Twitch who is really good at um, tracking his time. Is that how you spell it? So shout out to Tim. There we go. So check out his stream. He actually made his own game engine in C plus plus, and he's really good at tracking his time. Your ideal goal is four on, four off. Yeah, that 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 I that would be a good goal. I would like to t try to get that, and then if I can, move more of it to stream time. The ultimate goal would be I stream everything, but then I would have to have breaks. And one thing I'm not good at yet is um, reassembling my VODs, removing the breaks, and then up exporting them to YouTube. I don't have a good workflow for that yet. All right, so let me bookmark that position and then find... What was it here? Oh, it's the, okay, I don't need to bookmark that then. So the general pattern is I'm going to replace the WS client server with that. So that. And then I re I'll remove this obscure call. Make sure that number is the same there. What's going on here? Right, it's, it's in the next configuration. Got it, okay. That's a special one. And I can remove that, and then this becomes um, peer dot. 
I'm kind of nervous about making these changes, so I'm testing them one at a time. This is in messaging. All right, so we're good. Next, this one. Okay, so that is that with 1337. And then that's peer dot. Oh, this one actually had two of them. All right, and remove that one. So this is a peer two. Oh, redundant connection, I get it. So, right. Um, this gets removed then, right? And we verify it's peer one that stays around. Is it one or two? Hold on. Undo this a bit. It is one, not two. Okay. Let's verify that. You found the VOD using Twitch Leecher, watching it using MV MPV. You can quickly skip forward from that. Ah, huh. I have to look into that. I just record it simultaneously locally, and then if I need to, I I use um. Use, I'm using Camtasia right now to um splice things together and also uh, if I need to remove bits I remove it that way and then I have to re-upload it to YouTube which is a pain because it, it's it takes time and it also goes against my monthly bandwidth cap which I didn't know I had until last year I thought oh I have unlimited data right no I have limited data it's like a terabyte a month or something okay yeah this goes to that delete that Well, is that right? And then close. So it would just be this, right? And I guess I need that. Let's try that. I'm really hesitant to make these changes, but I think they're correct. Messaging. Okay, we're good. Hey there, Romania. How's it going? I use OBS, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing to record it locally. So I record it locally, but then I have to, if I have to post-produce it and splice it, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> okay. What I'd like is if Twitch, if I maybe Twitch already has this, but if they had tools for splicing together and removing, like editing a VOD before upload to YouTube, I'd use that, and then I would uh, be more comfortable taking more breaks. I would just sort of, I would end the stream saying I'll be back in half an hour or something, and then I start the new stream and later I would just splice them together. I don't like the idea of letting the stream run with like a lunch screen. I know some streamers do that. Some streamers use do that, but I'm not a fan. Okay, that gets removed, right? And then this is 85. Is 85 filter still here? 85 inspired by 85 filter. I'm doing this one thing at a time because I'm nervous. Messaging. After a huge fight with Docker containers, you just SSH in one of them and install curl and access the other one. Apparently in an EMV file, do not put the other container's port. Ooh, yeah. It's always, isn't that always the worst when like you have a difficult problem and it turns out to be just something, like one thing that was neglected or mistyped. I hate that when that happens. I guess the good, the good thing is you found it, right? You figured it out. Ooh, this is an evil server number. Unknown instance number. Okay, then. You're right, we're supposed to hang up on it. Okay. This is 1337. Drop that. Oh, yeah, look at all this ugly stuff. We don't have to do this at all anymore. We just say peer 2 and it's 13531. And then I can drop all this ugliness here. Look at all that stuff I can delete. Does not attempt to connect to instance which is already connected. Oh, the idea was to make have the two other instances connect in and then make sure we don't try to connect to them again. Okay. Again, nervous, so I'm going to run the test again. 
he changed Docker Compose like 10 to 15 times. Yeah, it, it, I remember I had the same experience. It take it takes a lot of times to get it right. The good news is after that, I think everything from there is downhill. It's uh, as in a good good kind of downhill. Uh, any changes you'll have to make after that should be pretty easy to do, right? Reuse Rancher. You got too many OBS versions. You got the original one, multi-platform and studio. What's the original? Because I use OBS Studio, and I thought that was the name of the original OBS. Okay. Still stripping this stuff out. So that goes here, and then there's a disconnection. So peer dot. I, don't, I think I need that as well. And then it tries to reconnect, right? Okay. Okay. That's an expect, so I need that. Uh, it looks like I have two tests that do it. And this one is a new style. So drop all this. What's this first connection stuff? Oh, it's an outgoing connection, right. Servers kind of connect to each other, so all these tests are testing, like, if, if A connects to B, then B doesn't try to connect to A, or B drops its connection to A if, if A connects to B, that kind of stuff. All right. The original version was called Open Broadcast Software, and it was Windows only. Oh, it was? So this is, like, uh, older history of OBS then. So I didn't start using it until it was just OBS Studio. Okay, hidden in here was this thing. We're getting rid of that. Let's see if I do this right. Okay, really, a drop incoming connection from lower ID, we connect second. Oh, right, so this is actually... I think I need to keep this as it is because we connect without identifying. Then we let some time pass. And then, so it connects back to, so A connects to B, but doesn't say that it's A. B connects to A, thinking A is not talking to A yet. And then A identifies itself. Hey, I'm A. It should drop the B to A connection. So I think I need to leave that as is. What about this one? This is the same thing. No, this one I can use. Right, I can use the shortcut. I can do it this way. And drop that. And then this becomes peer dot. Okay. Just a couple more. Well, this one I need to keep. No, oh no, wait a minute. Both of them I need to keep? Yeah, both of those I need to keep. How about this one? This one I can simplify. That's these lines go away. And then this is now peer dot send text message. And I don't need to say the encoding because that's boilerplate. And I don't need this, I think. All right, let's run everything. That's a good cleanup. I reduced that quite a bit. There were 77 or something like that when I started. Hey there, Cthulhu. How's it going? How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, so they're, they're deprecating the name OBS multi-platform, I guess. I'm okay. I'm uh, on a quest to remove old cred from my unit tests. And it looks like I am successful because the tests still pass. And if I look at the changes I just made, it's a lot of deletions. A lot of crud develops over time in unit tests, and it's nice to finally get rid of it. So this is um, test refactoring. A refactoring of tests. Use the add peer connection helper. As much as possible. As much as reasonable okay what do I want to do next 
I look at these tests again, what's something that I do a lot that can be cleaned up? Oh, looks like I have a bunch of these I need to clean up. So yeah, that I already have a helper. I just didn't go through and yeah, for, I have 48 of these. So this is now add admin connection. And that optionally takes what? A number of messages to expect. So this we drop the false here. Yeah, so these, yeah, okay. Simple enough. Okay, and this is the old style again. So that means that drops away and we do that. Delete that. Cool. Do that. Oh, I should, um, I should put this in the uh, common framework, these test keys. Because it looks like on my little, um, radar screen they're in there at least three times okay that wait for message also can go admin message requires being admin oh be what wait it is admin. Why would this hang up on the person? Oh, because um, they don't authenticate as admin. So I suppose what I just do is call this not an admin, but a client. Oh, right, because it's enabled. So client, client pretending to, uh, trying to be admin, but not authenticating. There we go. So now I'll understand what it's doing. And then, then it tries to do something that's an admin command only. All right. All right. That's the helper itself. Actually, why do I have both? Shouldn't this one, shouldn't this one call the other one? I think it should. There's a connection context though. Oh, right, it's that. So I should, should I just do that? That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Okay. Admin connection. Okay, more of this stuff. I think this will be next. Orchestrator identification. This is certainly in a lot of places, isn't it? 44, now it's only 35, getting there. Okay. If I had done this sooner, I wouldn't have had to do all this cleanup. Problem is I do it once without the helper and I copy paste it to like 40 different places. Okay, it's getting a little tedious, but we're getting there. Got to get through it. So, Mr. Muffles, I think I slouch too, and I don't really notice it as much, as well as you do. So if you ever come up with a, that device or whatever that, like, beeps at you or shocks you when you um have bad posture, I'd like to try it. Let's see. I think that's the default, right? Okay, this is a non-default. Although, um, yeah. So this is a this is a two there. Whoops. Lost my place for a second. And this is the old style. So that goes to that. That goes to that, and then we have to say admin dot send text message no encoding because that's part of boilerplate boilerplate and we remove that side by side comparison yeah 
Yeah, that's what I'm familiar with. So this is what it used to look like. It just looks a little bit more primitive, right? This just looks like a better chrome. But I see the same kinds of features. That's this scene, and these are the... um. What, are they, what is it called? Sources. And this is just a slightly primitive, slightly more primitive version of the mixer controls. And there's some things missing, like the, some of the buttons are missing. Doesn't look too different, like functionality wise. Okay. It's a two there. Ooh, an old style one. Okay. That removes to that, and this becomes admin.send text without the encoding and remove the weight. Why do I have this business? Oh, I think that's old boilerplate stuff. I'll have to go, I'll, in another pass, I'll go through and remove that stuff. Okay. There's a two. That number is how many response messages to expect. So there it's it's two, right? Two objects. And that's so that this wait can wait for the correct number of r response messages. It has a it uses a future. Um it's not set up there, but where the f where the promise end of this future is set, it's set to wait for there to be two, however many messages you ask to to wait for. In this case, is two. Okay, old style. So it is there. Delete that part of it. Then this becomes um, evan dot send text without the encoding. We'll remove that. Cool. Oh, and this needs to change too. This becomes um, this expect. I think I forgot to do this on one place, so I'm probably going to fail the test. Admin dot wait for messages. See, that's much cleaner than this garbage. And this, all right, this is admin dot uh, get text messages received. I know I missed that in one other place. All right, yes, yeah, all this garbage is what I used. To, all of this was replaced by one line, essentially. It's just add an admin connection, expect the two here, and then delete all this crap. And then I just need to do admin dot send text message, no encoding, because that's boilerplate, remove that line. And then this becomes expect true admin dot wait for messages. And this is admin dot get text messages received. Yeah, yeah, that's the, if I could do that, I would <laughs> replace everything with one line. Oh, one line that just says pass. Expect true, true. That would be cheating. You can't do that much. You have to actually not cheat. But this is excessive, right? So, oh, we're expecting four messages. Wow. All right, I do see four. Okay. Okay, so, um,. This is four, and then all this drops away. We do subscribe to log, though. So send text, remove the encoding, remove the weight. And then another admin send text. Remove the weight. That weight is no longer needed because that's actually built into this expect right here. 
All right. Mm. Four. Remove that. Two. Remove that. Eight left. Get in there. I know I broke something this time, though. It's not, it's not possible for me to have done that and not broken something. And deleted. Getting there, only two left. It's like I need a drink already. Oof. Yeah, it won't even compile. It has trouble for some reason in the versioning CPP. It always says it can't find it in this, the C CPP properties. I don't know why. Maybe I have two files named versioning.cpp that it gets confused between them. Okay, so I screwed up subs somehow. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I deleted this code that's used here. So this is the old code, right? So it's um, admin, it's expect true admin dot wait for messages. Then that replaces that. Don't know what F6 does, but sometimes I accidentally hit that and I'm actually kind of happy nothing bad happens. Client undeclared in auth, ad, auth admin 4042. Oops. Oh, ad, uh, this one. Gave him a long name to to remember that he's trying to he's acting as an admin but not, hasn't authenticated. Okay. So I think I'm gonna fail some tests here. Yep, I did. And it failed in a way that it cleared the data, which I don't like. Let's see. But somewhere in here, okay, it's there. Let me just look at the test. Uh, probably by maybe my inspection, I'll figure out what it is. It's in auth admin. Bad admin. This one. Mobilize server. Here's some keys to try. Add the admin connection. Try to send an auth response. Okay, I don't see what I did wrong there, so let me debug it. Um, Let's clear out all the old breakpoints. Hit the bug button. So we got to here. Why did it crash there? It has a message. Oh, is this a race? Let me see what the... Let's see what Gitlin says. What did that code used to look like? I think it is a race. Hold on, wait. I'm not looking at the right thing. Bad. There we go. This one. I wonder if this wait is now required. Because it is expecting to get one. I think that's what it is. I think what I'm supposed to do here is do... Um, let's just do an assert. The question is, does it wait again? It does not wait again. Okay, so we're good with that. Auth admin. Try again. Okay. So, let's be hopeful that's the only thing I screwed up. Suspense is killing me. Uh-oh. We missed messed up one of the subs. Three. Three tests are broken. 
Okay. When admin subscribes, tell it we are already a leader. Okay, so let's go there. When admin subscribes, tell it we are a leader. Okay. It's breaking here. Oh, right. It's using the old machinery. Okay, so this is replaced by assert true. Actually, I guess we can make it a softer. No reason for it to be an assert. Expect true admin dot wait for messages. And maybe I made the same mistake in those other places too. Client subscribes to log. Oh yeah, look, all this old stuff is still here. Looks like we're waiting for three connection, three messages. So that needs to be a three there, and then remove this old machinery. Okay, that's probably what that was. And the final one was client changes diagnostic level. What happened there? Expect four connections. I mean, four messages. Subscribe. And then wait. Oh, we called wait more, more than once. That's the problem. So hold on. I need to look at what it used to be. Git lens. Line four. Fit five six. Line four five six. Oh, can we do that? Oh, it's that it's not ready, and then it is ready. So this should be an expect false. And I don't want it to wait too long. Hold on. Let's see if I got this right. It's not ready. It sends a threshold and then another message and then it is ready. Okay. Let me just verify this. Wait for messages. It doesn't wait too long. It waits a second. Okay, I don't like that. Can I maybe change the default? Because this was not waiting that long, right? Four, five, five, six. This was just polling it, right? Let me see if I have a variant of this code that doesn't wait very long. It's the reset. No, I don't. So let's make it. So that's not too hard. We can just um, give it a default. So I can take this value out and make it a default here. So we call it, we call it default. So standard chrono. There's maybe a better way to do this other than being redundant. Timeout. And then I take this and paste it here and then just put that there. And then in the testing question, I can put here standard chrono milliseconds zero. It's just supposed to poll it, not wait. All right, so we're gonna try subs tests again. Oh, it crashed. Oh, that first one, it crashed? Okay, let's see why. Oh, do I, did I wait more than once? Is that the problem? No, no. Oh, it's this old code here. Actually, it wasn't that. Uh, but this shouldn't be there. That should not be there. This is actually um, old as well. That is mobilize server as leader, I believe, because it has those extra two lines, I think. Yeah. Oh no, but then there's there's a wait here. Is a wait needed? I don't think the wait's needed. I think I can just do that. Uh, okay, but why is this breaking? 
Oh, because of that. That's why. Why do I have from encoding? This should just be admin dot get text messages received. Oh, but then this right, it was a JSON array? No. Standard vector of JSON values. And that's the one value can have. I think that's the new style. Uh forget okay. It was in subs, yeah. Run subs again. Didn't crash, but it also didn't work. Oh, we have some extra messages from becoming a leader, so... When I subscribe, tell it we are a leader. What's this things and stuff? <laughs> Stats. Why is it receiving these extra stats? I mean, the first message is there. It's just getting an extra message. Oh, was I only looking at one message before? That might be why. Let me look at the lens again. 106. It's like, only cared about the first message, I think. Yeah, okay, so it only cares about the first message. So, I can just remove this array and just do that. Actually, and to be safe, really, this should be an assert. Because if they didn't receive one message, then that would go out of bounds. All right. Getting there. One more broken test, right? Client changes diagnostic log level. And that, ooh, it had an exception. Okay, let's see where that was. Right there. Oh, got the promise value twice, so we can't wait for messages more than once. Oh, that's right. But there's a way to reset it, right? It was admin.reset message receiver. That, like, made a new, makes a new promise, I, think, I believe. If I can go to it. Yeah, it makes a new promise. It also clears that, but that's okay. It didn't receive any at the beginning. So we're good. Okay. Green light? No. Red light still. Please call mom more often. Yes. What's different? Oh, this is extra. Okay. And it didn't get all the messages it expected. I mean, how many did it expect? Four. And it got how many? It di didn't get all the messages it needed to get. Okay, what did I do wrong? I wonder if it's because this sends it, but it doesn't synchronize the receipt of it. Uh, let me compare it with what that code used to have. If there's like a wait there, that might I might still need to have the wait. Okay, I do. I have a connection wait. That's uh, that's the equivalent. Hold on, let me think about this. That's just synchronizing the sending. I don't didn't think I needed to do that line or that line, but maybe I do. Let me think about this.
What does send message do exactly? Client wait one loop. And then what did the lens tell me I was doing? I have six. Client. Okay, so these I don't need. Uh, that that I don't need, but maybe I still need this end. Let me let me give that a try. It's it's to prevent a race. It's what it's there for. Actually, that's it. What depends on what what the uh, wait for messages does. It does do that, so I don't need that line. Okay. It's timing out only receiving the first two messages that's the problem. It receives... Actually, it's receiving them in the wrong order. It receives a log threshold zero first. It's receiving that one first? What? Okay, I don't understand what's going on. What's this log message? This one. Okay, it's this one. So it's reported and we get that one. It's level seven. Okay, we initialize, it's, it starts out as 10. So we shouldn't get it there. And then it reports it again after we lower our level, our threshold level. So yeah, it expects an empty batch. Oh, if we expected the batch, this, okay, hold on. So this, when I reset it, it's not going to get th this one at all. Actually, it's not going to get these two at all. That's probably why. So let me move this a little bit. Actually, doesn't even I don't even maybe need to see that. Let me see. Yeah, I don't need that. So what if we just don't expect those two? And then we're going to wait for two messages, not four. That's probably what it is, right? Yeah, let's try it again. Nope. Nope. It... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, that first wait was extraneous. It's going to wait for for two... No, wait a minute. Hold on. It got the messages it was waiting for? Oh, right. It did get the two messages. Right. So there are two messages. Okay. This is... I'm just going to remove these. There's no reason for us to wait there. Oh, but I need to put the batch back in there. Yes. Okay. That makes sense because it didn't clear it. So if I don't clear it, I put it back in there. I just don't wait up here. And we'll get four messages total. Okay. Yeah. Right. We can't wait twice because uh, without clearing the... Right. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hey there, digital art dev. Or should I say, MN digital art dev. How are you doing? I'm uh, refactoring today. I'm cleaning up old test code. Maybe not the most exciting thing, but it is really useful for me. As I um, build more and more tests, I... Um, what's this? Oh, that's the common stuff. I, I, I'm removing like something that's harder to read and replacing with something that's easier to read. So that helps me a lot down the road because the tests I'm building are, are important. They, they're they my safety net. If I change anything in my code, I want my test to, to tell me that they that I broke something. 
And if I can't read my own tests, it, it becomes unmaintainable. So this is all for future well-being of me. <laughs> so refactoring of tests. So this was about you, you use the add admin connection. Actually, this is going to be a separate line. Use the admin helper. Good to see someone working on C++. Oh, I'm glad that you like watching someone working on C++. I've been doing C++ for a long, long time and trying to improve my evil ways, like these tests that are so long. It's feedback I get from my viewers that helps me um, recognize when I'm coding poorly and then I need to pay more attention and clean things up. Which is, which is one of the reasons that I stream this stuff. Okay, what did I want to hit next? I really want to go through all these tests and make sure that they're small enough to read them. Like, this is good. Although this is a little bit complicated, I understand why. It's looking for specific things in the messages it gets back. But this should be readable. We add two test users. We mobilize the server. We add an admin connection. The admin sends this specific message, and we expect back one message that is type players with two players, Alex and Bob, which are the test usernames. I could make this a little bit nicer by not using hard coding Alex there and there, I suppose. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Rubber duck programming. I don't know what this rubber duck means. Guys gotta understand, I'm older. I don't get all the memes. Sometimes the memes, poof, right over my head. The rubber duck one, I don't quite get. All right. Do I want to clean up these names? I'm actually okay with my, my, myself remembering Alex and Bob and Carol are the three test users. Maybe I'll keep that for now. You explain the code to someone in order to find mistakes. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought it was a meme, maybe. Thanks for the follow, by the way, Digital Art Dev. Yeah, I'm, I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm explaining it to you guys and to myself to make sure that um, that has no mistakes. So what is this doing? This is including the creation time and last login, okay? All right, this, as long as it fits within a page, I'm okay. Okay, this is getting longer. But it is more elaborate, so we are banning Bob permanently and then banning Carol temporarily. And then we are seeing that come back out the other end. Okay. Software engineering, rubber duck debugging is a method of debugging. Isn't that kind of redundant? Rubber duck debugging is a method of debugging code. What else would you debug if not code? I guess you could debug a design. The name is referenced to a story in the book Programmatic, the Pro Pragmatic Programmer. They explained it to the duck. Okay, this is obviously before streaming, right? Because wouldn't it be better to explain to real people rather than rubber ducks? Okay, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Yes, that's I guess what I'm doing. That one was reasonably clean. Oh, right. I went into these test keys are everywhere. Actually, they're not everywhere. They're just in three places. So let me let me take these out. Uh, what do I want to do here? Why do I have the public key here without a name? And then here I bothered with a name. Why did I do that? Oh, because I used it later down here. Okay, well, let's let's take the key, the pri the admin pr private key out first. I take that out there and I'm going to paste it in common and actually it's a constant, right? So can I just declare it here? I forget. Can I do, can I do this? Uh, I just paste it here. Oh yeah, I, did, I, did, I had it for that. Okay, here we go. So paste. And we'll, ex we'll just collapse it so it's easy to read. Should we just name that? test admin private key and then I use it uh, back wherever I used it where where were we here and then I'll find the other places where it is so here collapse delete paste we're done and then one more place 
because these are all these are just test keys and there's no reason why I need to put them here and then the same for the public key as well right so that's a little bit different that it didn't have a name assigned to it so I got to give it a name test admin public key and then have room for it and then paste it and collapse that and use collapse please and then use that name here Undoubtedly, that line will be in the other places, right? Actually, I wonder if I even need to do this here. If it's always the same, why don't I just build it into the... Yeah, why am I doing it here? I'll just build it into the main setup. Yeah, I'll just delete this from these places, and we'll do this um, in common here in setup. Setup. Uh, where's a good place? At the end here, maybe? Yeah. So we'll set it, but we'll disable authentication by default. That's just to make the test easier. And then I don't need to do that, right? There we go. I cut that file down to size. What did it used to be? It used to be 454 lines. Now it's 228. Yay. Assuming I didn't break it. Well, maybe we can just call it rubber ducking for short. I just think it's sort of an empty term to, to say rubber duck debugging is a method of debugging code. That's because if you just remove rubber duck, it, it's extremely redundant. Debugging is a method of debugging code. I think it would be better to uh, find some, a better phrase than debugging code. Oh well, it's Wikipedia. If they haven't locked that article and one of us thinks of a better term, we should go put it in there, right? Maybe we'll run the file through a preprocessor and compare the output of those. I'm pretty sure when I set those keys up in the first place, I just copy pasted them because there'd be no reason not to. So Oh for the line count. This, well, it's this file, it's uh, yeah, sort of cheating. I moved code from one place to another. Technically, I added code to common, right? Because I added that line, and then I had to add this area. So the common got bigger. But I'm okay with that, because this is just defining the framework for the test, the, all the helpers. I'm okay with that. Especially that I can collapse it while I'm reading it. All right. Done with that step? So this is uh, hideaway test keys in common test fixture. Explain the reconnect token from the front end. Do the server send a reconnect token after login, or do you store that in the session storage? Okay, yeah, I can explain that. It might be best to show the unit test for that. That's in auth player, right? Let me f pick the test that does it. It's start login with token, I believe. No, that doesn't explain the whole use case. I think I broke it up into multiple use cases, so it's not all in one place. Okay, so I'll, I'll show... Without the token, what happens? Why do I have a helper that does it? If you don't have a token, you log in with your password, right? And that, again, this is inside of an encrypted channel. So it's, it's okay to transmit this in the clear, so to speak, because it's really not in the clear, it's encrypted. Anyway, we send it in the... We send the password initially, and then what the finish does is it provides back a token. So in, in the test, it's just Monica Hey, but in the real thing, it just generates a random token and stores it in the uh, database for the player, along with um, an IP address 
that it was used from in an expiry. This is just extra security. You might not care about this part. But I didn't want the same token to be used by another IP address, and I wanted it to expire after a certain amount of time. Um, just in case there was a problem with the token being kept on the client side, and then you log out, and I, maybe I forget to clear the token, that it minimizes the chance of someone hacking your account. I, it's probably don't need it. Anyway, we store it in the database so that the next time you try to log in, this is where the other test case comes in. Um, I'm, I'm explaining the back end. You wanted me to know the front end. Uh, but uh, just be patient for a bit, please. And I'll, I want to get the back end explained first. The, the, you have a token. Where is that? This is just giving background for your question, really. So you, you get the token from initially logging in with a password, and it gives you back a token, right? And then, so the next time you log in, you can use the token instead of your actual password. And um, it will just check to see if you already have a token. Is it the same IP address? Is it the same user as the token match? And if it's not expired, then it, then it acts as, as good as your password. So the front end. So what you've been waiting for, the, uh, the way I do that, is uh, on, I, said, I think it's login status. If we're logged in and we get a token, I put it in local storage. So, oh, I don't have that running. I, I guess I should run this. Reserve and let's run the player console. I'll show it when, as soon as it boots up, but it puts it in local storage so that later we can use it. So if you have a token and the username is remembered, if there, those two are remembered, then it just tries to use them. But yeah, it's local storage. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, though. This is just something I came up with. It, I would be I would feel better if a security expert reviewed this to make sure it's okay, because to my understanding, this local storage it's user specific, so that if um, someone else were to log in with a different account, they can't see that. Um, and and I have this so that it removes it on logout, like it shows here. So if you log out, then it gets cleared. All right, so local host two, three thousand and one. Still booting up, okay. Uh, what else can I show? Oh, for the making it's just a random piece of uh, information. When you um, hold on, where is it? <sighs> Sorry, it's in auth, right? Log in. No, it's not done here. It's done in the. No, it is done there. Sorry. We have to put the token when we make the command. Oh, I guess I do it in the pre-check. Wait a minute, where do I set it? Oh no, okay. Right, it's this generator update login token. So I use a cryptographically strong generator, this RNG thing. So on Windows, actually, okay, so here, in Linux, it's dev u random. That's what I use. And on Windows, I use uh, bcrypt gen random. So definitely recommend that if you're going to make tokens, is to use a cryptographically strong random number generator, not just kind of use rand. So dev u random, it's user mode random, so it's pseudo random derived from actual entropy bits like timing for uh, network packets and that kind of thing. So yeah, there wasn't much to it, was there? Uh, it was all, I already lost the mic, I didn't pin it, shoot. It's all in this local storage, set item and uh, remove item, so not much to it. For the front end. Yeah, so if I look at, and this is how you'd see it in the, it's under application right here, right? So it's it's remembering 
the configuration of the game only right now. And that's mostly because it's, um, I think that's old from when I had 3001 mapped to the admin console. Correct battery horse staple. So when I log in and I get back a token, it's stored there. And then when I log out, it's removed. So that's how, that's how you'd see it in Chrome. What if the file doesn't exist? Oh, that always exists in Linux, I believe. I believe that's a standard Linux thing. So it can't not exist. I think a lot of things would break if you didn't have dev view random. I could be wrong about that. Maybe I should check. Dev view random. It just says they are. It doesn't say whether or not it, they're guaranteed to be there. It'd be nice if it did say that, right? Like if it was in some specification of Linux or Unix or something. So FreeBSD has it as well. OpenBSD has rev, dev random and a random, but not u random. Huh. Good thing I'm not on OpenBSD, huh? They're available on Solaris, NetBSD, TrueUnix, HP, Lin, UX. Yeah, see how they say in Windows NT, you can use crypt gen random. I think that was replaced by bcrypt at some point. So your reconnect token can be used in a new session. Yeah, so let's say I log in here again. Thanks for the follow, Z Zololo. Did you follow me twice? You follow, unfollow, and then follow again? Or is that just a stream elements thing? Okay, so let's say I close Let's just close the entire browser, right? Then open it again. It should still be in there. Yeah, so it's persistent. I think if you use session storage, it goes away after you close the browser. Local storage is semi-persistent. I don't know how long it lasts. I mean, you can always clear this out, right? If I, if I clear this out and then close it and reopen it, and then go back to that page. It doesn't. It doesn't actually have the token anymore. So it doesn't even remember my username. So there it goes. Yeah, per pretty much persistent. You appreciated the double animation. All right. Theoretically, you can unmount dev, and that would only really. The environment in which you had no slash dev is very limited, right? Maybe a certain part of the bootstrap or shutdown process. So during that, in that context, I don't think it makes sense to run the game. <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry if I over explain things. Again, I was talking about this yesterday. I'll, I will tend, I will probably tend to over explain because I don't get immediate feedback of if I answered the question correctly or not, or well enough or not. That's just something I guess I have to practice with. Get better at just um, explaining things less verbosely, and if you didn't get the answer, you tell me. All right, so these are much more manageable now that the um, keys are hidden away. I don't see anything in here that I don't like. Okay, let's go to auth player. Those look fine. Doesn't look too bad. I'm looking for like old crud. I don't see much old crud. Okay, this might be old. That, I think... Why do I have that in there? Thanks for the follow. Gwiz70. I don't know if I need to have all of this because I made a add test user that does this. But let me see what add test user actually does. Okay, it doesn't actually set the password re reset token, but I can do that with a change. What if I do, what if I do this? Change Alex Is this any better to read is this any better to read than this if I um 
put that in here. Actually, I don't, I don't remember how this works. Let me go in here and look. Oh, it doesn't work. How do I set... Oh, it's a special method. Set, password, reset. I mean, that's what it is. Okay. So it would be this. With... Now, does it base64 encode it for me? No. So I would want that here. So which is better to read? That or that? I think that's better. Let me test it, make sure that, that will work. New one, yeah. Okay, it doesn't like it because I need to make this a common variable. Const auto password reset token. And then, actually I can make that one line now. And then I just need to use it down here. Alex. Oh, again down here. Which command is this? Set password. Oh, right, right, okay. Cool. Auth player. That passes, I'm gonna... I'll, okay, that passes. So... That's nicer. We'll do that. So then I'm looking for this, the pattern of the code was... Uh, Password reset token equals. Well, I guess I can search for that. Okay, so there are a few more places. All right, so here again. All right, here. And here. And here. No reset token. Okay. Actually, that's already pretty succinct, right? I'll just leave that one alone. Okay, this one's specific. It has to have a different username each time. I'll leave it alone. What's this one doing? All right, that's different. Okay, let's just test this. Compiler error driven development. Right, so it needs the password reset tokens. Actually, just remove the Alex dot. And here too, probably, yeah. Missed one? Yep, missed one. All right, and that's in auth player. Here we go. Okay. I'll check that in, and then I'm going to take a quick break, like a couple minutes. And then get right back to this. After I commit this. So, a little bit of simplification. So, uh, let's see, simplify. Oh, literally, it's test, refactoring of tests. Sim should I capitalize that? Sure. Simplify setup for password reset tokens. All right. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be back in like a minute or two. 
I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> I am back. All right. All right, so I'm mostly just looking through this. Do I know Cloudflare? Yeah. I was um, comparing that to what Amazon has. It's on my list of things to look into if I need more stuff like that. I was going to see if I can, if uh, what I have now through the Amazon stuff is good enough. But yeah, I'll be looking into that if I need it. Actually, um, the built-in DOS stuff, I think is pretty good because the only way I'm letting things into my game servers is through WebSocket connections. So it lets me do a lot of things like if, if the connection isn't made and upgrade to WebSocket right away, I just ban them or disconnect them. Um, the slow Loris attack doesn't won't work because if they the, after a second we just disconnect them, we reset the the connection if they don't identify themselves. It, it it doesn't have to be as flexible as the normal web server might be because I only accept a WebSocket connection, nothing else. It doesn't have to obey a lot of the things that normal HTTP would have to deal with. And then once you get a WebSocket, I again have rate limits and timeouts and stuff in place. So, something like Cloudflare would probably, I, I would need that if I get, like, a lot of attacks and, uh, like, a sin flood attack. If I ever get that, then uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure how I would defend against that other than doing clever things with the firewall. Unless I move to something like Cloudflare. Okay. A lot of this stuff is is okay already. What's this doing? Oh, it's just verifying hashes and stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's a more comp they they get a little bit more complicated towards the end for authentication. Okay, how about the configuration stuff? This stuff should be okay. Oh no, wait. I was gonna do this right. All the ID orcs need to go. We're going to make another helper for that. How many times? That's 30 times. Okay, not too bad. So the, it's like that I was doing before with the um, add peer connection. So now it'll be an add orc connection. Not that kind of orc. It's orchestrator. Okay, so it only really needs a number of expected messages. So in common, add peer. So we'll put it here. Same kind of deal where I do auto so I don't have to say the class name twice. Common. Don't repeat the default. And then it's kind of like this actually. Only it's ID orc, right? And then the host name. 
which is always localhost for my tests. Right, okay. And it's not admin, it's orc. And private is true, yes. For peers and orchestrator connections. Okay, so now I have this add orc connection. So I can simplify this. Oh, thanks for the follow. Zoidberg's armpit. That's a funny one. <laughs> Mainly use Cloudflare to protect hide the real IP. Oh, well, see, um, the IP that will get leaked for me will be the um, EC2 instances in, in, in Amazon. So the only port I'll have open on those is HTTPS. And it'll only, it, it's basically my server code, which will only let you in if you quickly upgrade to WebSocket. So nothing else will be open. So I'm not too worried about revealing those IPs, I guess. The redirection, the force HTTPS, I actually already have that with um, CloudFront. So that's a similar thing from Amazon, right? So the main thing CloudFront does is replicates the client files, so like all the front end stuff, so that it's closer to people when they go to the game's website, it loads quicker. And uh, it'll do the redirect stuff, it'll do the force HTTPS if I want that, although it doesn't really matter. For the game client, there's nothing sensitive. It's really just st files in an S3 bucket. And um, all the server side stuff is hidden inside the EC2 instance, which only, the only open port will be to um, connect to it as a WebSocket. So, I, yeah, I don't know if I'll need something more advanced, but we'll see. Never know. Okay, so this is add, and then there's a certain number of messages it expects, right? Okay, I, get, I can get rid of that. I'm going to have to search for wait for at least one worker loop to try to get those. Hello, Mr. Muffles' dad. Well, wouldn't it be better, Mr. Muffles, to explain it by having him watch your stream? Twitch is a great platform for almost any kind of community building interaction. That's a, that's a poor explanation. Twitch started as a gaming platform where people playing video games would um, broadcast what they're doing because a lot of people tend to like watching other people play games. You might... You might be wondering if the game is worthwhile to play, so you watch someone else play it and see if they're having a good time. And then it sort of grew out of that to other things, art, music, and programming now. So so what I found a lot of people t tune into programming streams for is to uh, connect with other developers, exchange ideas in chat, uh, see other programming languages they're not so f familiar with to see, like, if you don't know C++, you see me working on it, and then you say, oh, that's, there's some things I recognize, but other things I have no clue. And then you might ask, well, what, what does that do? And I might explain it. So it, it's, it's community, networking, and another aspect of it is people just like to have uh, background noise. And one kind of background noise that people like is to hear other people chatting about their own work. Uh, I think that's a social thing, a social phenomenon. A lot of people will be more motivated to work if there's someone near them also working and, and the vocalization of the thought process that streamers tend to do is kind of, it gives you that sense that you're, you're near other people who are working and they're being productive and so it makes you want to be productive. So that's my explanation of Twitch and how it relates to what I'm doing. Do I plan to use C Sharp in the future? Maybe. If I were to make a front-end client using Unity, I'd definitely be using C Sharp. I've, I've used C Sharp in the past mostly for making tools. It's uh, really useful for leveraging the .NET platform, but uh, I, don't, I don't see a need for me right now. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going through and um, simplifying this code. The one challenge of being a streamer is juggling the work you're doing or if it's a game, the gameplay with interacting with chat. And it's harder than it looks. Let me just say that. So anyone who streams, including Mr. Muffles, you should be proud of them for what they do because 
it's a lot harder to do your normal work or your normal hobby stuff and be streaming at the same time. It's like you're doing th two things at once. It's ex it's it's helping you develop a little bit more in the area of being agile and flexible and multitasking. Also, I think it helps build helps build your resume, right? You have these recordings that you can uh, point back to for any future employer who says, well, what have you been doing the last year? And I can say, well, you can see exactly what I was doing. It's all recorded and summarized on Twitch. Oh, what's Twitch? And then you can explain what that is. Which of your pets is your favorite and why is it your cat? <laughs> <laughs> I've shown my cat on stream a few times. Okay, one, one of the things that I have to worry about when I'm juggling work and chatting interacting with Twitch is that I might be making a mistake because not my entire brain is not focused on what I'm doing in the code. I tend to be more talkative if I'm doing something mechanical and I'll stop talking like here. I have to think about what I'm doing. This is really old code. I want to upgrade it. Yeah, that removes here. And we turn this. Is that all I need? Oh no, this is without a host name, so I can't use that helper. But I do want to use the normal connection, add connection. So that requires me to say true. And then this, whoops, whoops. That was the keyboard slip. Okay, orc dot send text message. And then I can remove that, right? Uh, there we go. Oh, you have a clip of me? Which Which clip is this? Oh, kitty time? Yeah, that's a nice one. So my cat will interrupt my stream to want to be led into the house. And last time he did that, his punishment was he had to um, face reveal. <laughs> I'm glad someone clipped that. All right. That can go... Wait, why do I have this? Oh, wait, what am I doing? I need... I need this. This can go. Got got it. Okay. Almost slipped up there. Okay, this one's simple. It's just that. That's a special one. And what is this? Okay, this is special in that it's false. So I need to make this an ordinary connection with false. And the, the false the flag here is whether or not the Connection is on the private end of the server because, as you may or may not know, the servers talk on a private network amongst themselves and on a public network with clients. The orchestrator is always on the private end. So we don't want to allow like a client attempting to impersonate orchestrator. We'll give, we'll give him a glorious name. We don't want him to um, be allowed to identify himself as an orchestrator. If he tries to do that, we'll expect that it's not recognized as an orchestrator. Orchestrator's set is empty still. All right. Okay, more boilerplate stuff here. Should be released. Okay, so this is just uh, this. Actually, this should be const, now that I think about it. We're not changing that pointer after we assign it. And then this is orc dot. Orc dot. Okay. Okay. This goes here with the optional argument of two. And that's the uh, default is one. Oh, wait a minute, there's a diag level. Is that always there? Huh. So I should, I should really build that into this guy. Um, yeah, let's build that in here. So let's copy that and put it in there. Five will be the default level, and the default level shall be five. Four shall not the default level be. No, and six is right out. Something like that. Is that why it can't be const? 
because that wait for messages. Uh, that's why. Okay. Fine. All right. Couple more, right? So that's two. And that's also a two. That is not needed. And that text messages received is better said through this helper. Reset message receiver. Okay. All right. Three here. Whoops. Slip again. Okay. That is replaced by that. Okay, I'm keeping that. All right. That's three, yes. Oh, okay. That's just that. Why did I... Oh, oh, never mind. I'm just confused. I get confused sometimes. Right, okay. And that is that. Okay, two orchestrators here. It's getting tricky now. There are three messages expected from that one. and Okay, they both expect three. Fine. Both identify themselves, okay. All right, so that is orchestrator expecting two messages. Okay, but diag level three, maybe I make that an op optional argument. Let's do that. So there's an optional argument for add orc connection. Uh, size T, uh, no, it's an int, I think. Int, uh, whatever I called it. Diag level. Default to five. And then we just put diag level here. All right. Where was it? I already lost where I had said it. Oh, well. Add, it was add or connection. Okay, I, I lost where it was. Shoot. Was it here? Oh, that can't be a const. Okay, I already lost what I was where I was where I added the non default level. I'll find it again if it's important. Those are special. This one's not. Okay, almost done. Only two more, I think. And then I'll see what I broke. And then that is orc dot reset. Okay. See what I broke. Oh, it won't compile. Oh, because I'm running it. <laughs> Let's stop running it so I can rebuild it. Oh, no, it was a different error. It must have been that it had to do a re full rebuild. Okay, so we can start that back up again. That's fine. Uh, okay, so run the tests. Oh, oh, broke one thing at least. Broke two things at least. How many things did I break? Yeah, one thing there and one thing there. Config, config, config. Line 154. It received two messages instead of one. Why did it receive two messages? Uh, 
Oh. Right, because I didn't do that right. So orc reset. Probably. Although that doesn't sound quite right. No, that was it. <laughs> the other one was in subs, I think. I hate that it re again, I hate that it resets everything. No, it was in raft. It resets my previous test results, and I don't, don't know why. It's only recently started doing that, too. Raft. F uh, 420. Okay. Actually true for... No, it's actually false. It didn't receive any messages. Why would it not have? Yeah, why wouldn't it have? Uh, did I let me look at the lens? The git lens around line four hundred. See what it used to be and what it is now. Wait a minute. Okay, the new line four hundred. Okay, here we go. Oh, it said foo bar. That's what it is. Okay. Let's see. I guess I'll just have to manually do that one because that's an oddball. So it needs to be f okay. We'll just take the old con old one and put it here. Just because it's an oddball. Although I'm tempted to just add another default argument. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. The harm is that I have to... The Diag level was already in there, and then I have to add... Because you can't just de... You can't default the fourth... You can't non-default the fourth argument, but default the, the third. That's the downside here. So now orc connection... has another default. Host name. that we put here and then that's defaulted to localhost and then we put the host name down here oh what's the kitty's name he's named casper and he's an old man cat he's like 15 years old fiddled out of order beyond yeah something like that foobar is just one of those words we use when making tests and hello world type programs just to have some text to put there. Function does not take four? Oh, did I screw that up? The true is not there, that's why. You could do an overload to default the int before the... Oh, that's right, because they're different types. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's do that. Let's have an overload. I like Bugfound's idea. You prefer the term wise kitten. Okay. I have to I have to consider that. Okay, so we're gonna make this one that way and this one that well Yeah, do it that way. So it knows by the type difference, so then I don't wanna be too repetitive here, so I really want to have uh a version that takes both. And we'll just make it non-defaulted. We'll non-default everything. So that will be um, the first version. I didn't even duplicate it yet. That first version, and then two more. One that has the diag level missing, the other one has the uh, host name missing. And they just call the other one. num expected messages diag level localhost the other one is just different so it's um five host name i got a return in both places and we're good right 
do do it really didn't like that. What did I do wrong? Because I don't have a comma. How could I leave the comma off? Ca comma never did anything wrong to me. It got really upset with that. Ambiguous call to overloaded function. Okay, so what's ambiguous here? I don't know. Where does it think the ambiguous call is? Yeah, lorem ipsum is the ty ty typographer's version of foobar. Fubar, is that right? Where you have to have some kind of text. I guess that would also be a web page designer. Web page designer's default text, right? Okay, that is redundant. Why? Oh, because I um, did have a default before and I removed it. So, put that back. No, I can't do that. That This was defaulted, right? No, I can't do that either. Shoot. I think it's because I'm getting tired. Okay, those are the two. Okay, this is ambiguous, right? So I can't make... That can't have a default. This can't have a default. That can have a default. If I turn this around, that'll work, right? You didn't need the middle one? Probably. If I default these other other values. No, I can't do that. Oh, this is the one that's defaulted, right? I think this is happening because I'm getting tired. So I, the, the idea is I don't need this one. Because if you give a host name, I guess I can just also... Uh, I can do this as well, right? Thanks for the follow, Danger BK. If you provide a hosting first, then you could provide. Then you, sh I should let de allow you to default the other things as well, right? <clears throat> What's up? I'm trying to. Uh, what am I trying to do? I'm getting tired. I'm trying to refactor my tests so that they're easier to read and maintain later. So I'm adding these helper functions that were like called like forty times in like a block of six lines of code down to just one line of code each each time. Okay, my mind my brain's getting foggy, but I think that's what I want. Can I get rid of this middle one? Which was right here. And I flip these two. And then just I have to hard code that one. Can I? No, I don't have to hard code it. That is a given. So that allows me to uh, have a non-default host name, and but default the rest. Okay. Then I wanted to use that. Where? I forget. <laughs> I forget where I was going to use it. Oops, I didn't mean to drag that edge there. Shoot. Okay, fixed. Right, it was here. I wanted to say foobar 3. Is there another problem down here? No, that's that's from the first problem. Okay. Well, tired, drink coffee. Yeah, I gave up I gave up uh, caffeine. The thing is I uh I need a break after 4 hours. Actually, it's already only it's only 3 hours. I think maybe uh refactoring takes more out of me. Is there a list of extensions? Yeah. Extensions.
So in, in addition to that list, there are a couple more. Let's see. Oh, no, I, I did update the command to include that. Yep. You're welcome. If you want, also, I have this video. If you want to see some of those extensions in action, there is a video there on YouTube about half an hour long. I used the CC++ and CMake tools extensions. I did not show the test explorer stuff because I, I just didn't update. The video is a little bit old before I even knew about this. We're passing everything, right? So I can check it in. Checking in work. It's like kind of putting the icing on the cake. So we're at, we added a new helper there, actually two of them. There are those declarations. So there's the refactoring. We reduce that down to one line, which is easier to read. All the um, details about how an orchestrator identifies itself, irrelevant to the test, right? And what was this? Oh yeah, cleaning some cleanup of some old code. I need to, okay, that's the next thing I wanna do. I wanna search for this WebSocket delegate and uh, try to remove that everywhere from the test because it's hard to read and it's old. And I already have helpers that that hide all that detail away. Test, uh, refactoring of tests, add, add the what? Add orc connection helpers. Push that. Okay, yeah, next I think I am going to search for web socket. Okay, I don't I don't have any matches there. Web socket delegate? Yes. All this stuff, I should be able to get rid of a lot of it. This one's specific, though. Webgate, I think we're going to leave alone. Messaging, though, now that's special. Yeah, this we can, we can simplify, or we can make it read easier. N new, well, hold on. No, this one's specific. New WebSocket from private is exactly that. I'm going to leave those two alone. But some of these don't need to be. And actually, no, these are fine. Actually, I guess we're keeping all of those. Those are fine. Still new to C++, so anything helps? Okay, cool. As a Java dev looking at C++ makes you tired instantly. Really? Maybe it's just my code. My code is like Resident Sleeper, maybe. Um, let me think about this. Maybe I've eradicated that call. Okay, let me look at that last check-in to see if I understand it. And that's with patch, please. Was it that, that delegate context thing? WebSocket delegate, that's what I search for, right? I can be more specific and say mock webgate arrow that. It looks like actually that I've gotten rid of it everywhere that it matters. These are, are specifically I want to keep. Okay, so that that's good. So what's the other thing that I did here I want to search for? Oh, it was like the wait, wait for... Um, one loop thing, right? Wait for at least one worker loop. Okay, let's search for that. Wait for at least one worker loop. I think there are a lot of these lines I can get rid of. Oh yeah, pre C++11, if you try to make a big program like this, it was awful. It was really awful. Okay, so the, the common probably is fine. Elections. Well, that's in Raft. I, can, I don't care about Raft right now. That's the real code. I need that. Okay, here we go. Do I need this? Okay, that I do because that's... Um, I think I do. Actually, I don't think I do. Let me test this theory. I think that is redundant. We don't need to wait for the coordinator to run one worker thread loop because the worker thread's not involved here. 
I believe. I believe, I believe. Okay, admin player controls. Of course, if it's a race condition, I won't really know, right? Run it enough times to see if it breaks. You think my code looks perfectly, re perfectly reasonable? Well, thank you. Problem is you're not familiar with it, so you just look hard. Yeah. I have the same issue when I look at, uh, like, Adam13531 streams JavaScript development in React, and it's way more complicated than I know about React so far. So I, I, I look at his code, and I'm like, I don't know what this does, but it looks cool. I can read, I can understand vaguely what it does. The white space indicators, it would be too distracting. Yeah. I, you know why I do that is I was working in a team who was really bad about mixing tabs and spaces. So I turned that on just as a, a, a out of habit in order to see tabs. And then I would like fix them whenever I came across them. One way or the other, right? If it's supposed to be all tabs, it should be all tabs. Otherwise, all spaces. Consistency. All right. I'm, I want to delve into this to make sure this is the right thing to do. The question is, would the receipt of this message synchronously apply a journal entry? I think the answer is yes. I need to verify. That would be in this file, I think. No. Near that file, though. Probably in this one. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. I moved that to mess and messages. Messaging. On, on a web socket text, right? So it, it gets in here. Let me make sure it gets in there. Right, the delegate it gives a web socket to call when it receives a message is that web socket text. It processes it right away, right? So it gets down to here and we'll uh, call the handler right away which we worked on yesterday or the day before, will end up going into uh, the correct place. So for that test, what was it? Change player profile. Check. So it'll go into here and then it'll, yeah, okay, so it's all synchronously done. Yeah, so I don't need that line. Although, let's put that back into here. So I can remove that line. I'm going to dismiss the raft stuff. Raft, raft, okay. These ones are fine. This one that I'm not sure about. Why do I have that line in there? I don't know. Good admin auth signature. I think that should be replaced by assert true admin dot wait for messages. And that's e that does the same thing, but it's easier to read. So add a connection, wait for messages, get the messages received. This will have failed us if we didn't get the, the one mess we by default it's one message we await but we if we wanted to we could wait for more than one get that message check the chat check the challenge sign it send the response and verify we're still connected at the end okay that's good and then this is this okay this is a similar thing so copy that line and paste it down here instead of admin it's hacker it will try to assign it without getting challenged. Is that what it's doing? Hold on. Without challenge, why would it? Oh, because it's not logging in. Um, no. Yeah, it's not sending. Right. So hold on. Then I'm not going to wait for messages. Why is it waiting one worker loop, though? I don't think it needs to. I don't think it does. But I'm not sure, so I'm going to test it. Oh, i got to sit up straight. <laughs> the problem is my mic setup is 
always a little bit off, off, a little bit off. <laughs> All right. And again. Ooh, all of these. Yeah, we don't need any of these. Yes. Actually, this is different. That is different. I think I keep that because we let it run. Does that right? make sense? No, that doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. It should... It should be part of this. It should be uh, peer. It should be. Oh, it's not forwarded to leader. Right. It should be peer dot ws server. No. Actually, we don't know which it is. Hold on. Let me check this. The connection comes in. Add connection does what? I mean, um, send message does what? It has the connection. The client end of the connection wait. So this should have the server end of the connection wait. Right. So that replaces that. Cool. Hey there, the Jamaga. Or maybe you were here before. Hey there, Mr. Kazendi. Is that how you say it? Or is it Merkazetti? Sorry if I got your name wrong. VS Code, yes. I got a I got a um command for that. Why do to explain why do I use it? I think that's the cor what I need to do there. Okay, again, this is not necessary. All these are unnecessary weights that I just kind of copy pasted around because I thought I might need them, but I do not. I do not need a wait between receiving a message and then checking to see if a command was added. That is definitely not needed. I'm going to remove it everywhere. Cleaning up code today, refactoring. So this is, that does need a wait, but it's a different kind of wait. It's this kind of wait. I think that is correct, yes. I get a server and client end of a connection backwards sometimes. Okay, so this is the what I need down here. Actually, wait a minute, what am I doing? This should do a wait for messages, so should this one. So it should be um, expect true player wait for messages. If we're specifically waiting for one or more messages. This one I couldn't do it because it's specifically making sure that we didn't get any messages. All right. Okay. Right. This does not need a wait. This, does this need a wait? Why do I have that in there? That doesn't need a wait. Neither does this. I think I just put them in there because I was being, I wasn't quite sure if I needed to have it do a wait. What this wait does is it tells the unit under test that um, we wanted to run one loop of its worker thread. And the worker thread does a few bookkeeping things, but in all of these test cases, they're irrelevant because we're already waiting anyway for something else to happen. So there's like, and, and for this example where the journal entry gets added, that ad gets added synchronously to that receipt. So there's no reason at all for me to be waiting. Uh, and that too, right? And then this one also, not needed. Thanks for the follows. Corrupt Root and Black, Ma Black Magazine 01. Okay. Hmm. What was this doing? Why did I have that there? Shouldn't I do a... Uh, I should be doing a player... 
expect true player wait for messages. There we go. Okay, see a danger 8k? Or danger BK? I keep seeing the B and reading it as 8. You have a good one too. Okay. I bet you I have more places here where I did the same thing. Yeah, this is unnecessary. Again. That also not needed. Hold on, maybe this is needed, because this is a special kind of login. What does this do? I don't think I need these weights. I don't think I need them. If it turns out I need them, the test will break and we'll, I'll know. I don't think I need that. Oh, no, I, but I do need a wait for messages received there. Yeah. Okay, let me test this so far. I get a little bit uncomfortable if I make too many changes that I'm not sure about. Um, this is one of the benefits of having done test-driven development. So I can make changes and uh, run them and see if things break. So I already broke something. I don't want to break too many things at once, though. That gets a bit demotivational. <laughs> okay, so what? how many did I break? Just two? Auth player line 1276. Okay, we're near that. Okay, we're not receiving anything. Uh, probably because it didn't wait. I, I removed a wait and I need a wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, this needs one of those. Yeah, okay. And the similar test, is that the next one? Probably the same problem? Yeah, look at that. Didn't have a wait. Mm, off player, let's run off player only. Yay, green, okay. So, go back, oh, hold on. I should wait until I see all greens, shouldn't I? All right, back to replacing these weights. That one I definitely needed. And actually, I could actually have a, I can actually make this a helper. Why don't I just do that? This should be a special helper called expect true peer. No, uh, no messages received. So let me bookmark that position and clear all the other bookmarks I had, okay? And then we'll make that something in the common framework here. We'll put it nearby the uh, wait. Where was the wait? Wait for message. There we go. So that's also a bool, but it has no arguments because it's not actually going to wait, right? Okay. Go to wait for messages. It's part of this class. And, okay, bookmark that because it's essentially I just want to take these two lines out and put it in here. Remove the peer dot. And then this becomes just a return. Cool. All right. Auth player, just rerun that test alone. Cool. All right. Next. I think all the common ones are fine. Let me double check. Close. Yes, those all, those are, ne those are needed because those are asynchronous. This, de this ensures a delivery is made for all of those. Yeah. Okay, mm yes, I think. What does simulate failure do? Sets a completion delegate. What does success do? 
So why don't I have a why don't I have a weight on success? I don't know. I have a guess though. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one. Leave that one for now. Okay, here, yeah. We don't need to do any of this stuff. Back to stri tripping out st stripping out code we don't need. Cause that we don't need. It's it's all because I did it wrong once and then copy pasta did everywhere. Well, what is what's the context here? Okay, yeah, this should be assert true orc dot wait for messages and I don't need this or that actually and then I, I don't need that either I can actually put that there as long as I make this a vector of JSON values then if there ever is more than one I just add it to that list there all right clean uh, we're done with that right Yeah, I don't need that. What's that doing there? Why am I doing it that way? What am I using this for? Follower does not send anything to orchestrators. Oh, okay, we're getting the current number of messages received received and then we're making sure it didn't change okay i think i'm leaving that then yeah i think we're leaving that just got seek just got vs code c plus plus extension update and now it's intellisense caching we'll now cache header information to improve speed okay i think that ac update actually broke broke my um vs code setup a while back but then they fixed it elsewhere where the 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 um Interaction between extensions, there was some bug, but then they fixed it a few days later. Keeping those. Right, so this can go away. Why do I have the command here? What the heck is this doing? Log index set when it's applied. Why do I care? Oh, right, that it's stored in the configuration. Okay, so I don't need that, though. Because the journal is updated immediately. Need those two. Okay, this is easier to do what? Actually, hmm. Sixteen hours ago? Oh really, so there was something new. So I look I can look forward to things breaking again. I think I have the auto update turned off. Yeah, I have it on manual. Actually, why is that in green now? It's deprecated. Anyway, I have I have it so that's not updating because you know, it broke me once and then I got pissed off and I'm like, I'm not gonna let it auto update. I'll update on the weekend when I have time to fix it before I stream. <laughs> So that, I should put in a reminder then to um, try upgrading. So you're saying that the uh, C plus, actually, let's say, let's just copy what you wrote. Try again. So try, try updating over the weekend to um, see if we can get the latest without breaking things. All right, we'll try that over the weekend. Fix bugs with squiggles, updating after edits? Yeah. They say that, but <laughs> I'm kind of skeptical because that's like the, the ever-present bug category of IntelliSense, that it doesn't always work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm on, you know I'm on mod manual update for a reason because it, it stung me the other day, okay.
All right, so this is expecting a message and then discarding it. Yeah, it's expecting something back. <sighs> I guess I'm keeping... Okay, really? I do want to help her for this. Maybe I build it into this. Oh, it already does that. Okay. It already waits one loop and then clears it. Okay, so that's what I want. Orc dot reset message receiver. S it resets the server and correct. Yes. Okay. I mean, it waits on the server and resets it. Okay. Good. 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 This one. Why is this two here not matching this? Do not announce single configuration. I have a. I have it in mind that this should be simpler. This ought to be expect true orc dot no messages received. But let me let me verify. It shouldn't get any messages when that is done. Config test, okay. Nope. Oh, I already broke. It's mo two things. So it does get a message. What message does it get? Okay, let's. So I have to undo that. Um, do I turn this into a no? Yeah, I think I'll just leave that. That's one place where we do want it to um, receive everything it's going to receive. We don't know how many. What was the other thing I broke, though? Huh. Broke something up here. It didn't receive anything. Why not? Wait a minute, why did I have four up there? That is that a, that's the bug, right? It won't get four messages. Only gonna get one. There we go. Alright. Presumably that will continue working and I can go set up to do more work here. Is this the same thing? Yeah, look at that. It oh no. The third one, so it will receive four. So I do not need this. And I don't need that. That's very s sensitive to the number of messages. Why is it receiving four messages? I kind of want to rewrite this to use this kind of a syntax. Yeah, I want to do it this way. So we don't care how many we're going to receive. We're just going to wait until we've received all we're going to get, and then we'll say if that equals that. Actually, let's have two things. So bool received single configuration message. So that is a, hold on, what's, okay. That's true. And then we'll assert that is true at the end here. And then the other s expectation is that new config matches string. Actually, hold on. What is new? New config is what? 
It's a JSON value. Okay, so don't cast anything. It's message receipt. Right, message receipt. Just that part of it. Configuration. There we go. I like that way better. So I should wrap up the stream in the next 15 minutes or so, because I have a sort of a hard cutoff today. I have some, something I have to do at a certain time, that kind of a thing. I did break this. Okay, so what, what the heck? But did it send it more than once? Is that the problem? Let me, let me read how, what this is supposed to do. No, it's only setting it once. So why am I getting it? Okay, hold on. Let me... Let me... That should be there. Let me um, count. Here. And see what loop that's on. Because before it was looking at only the fourth message. Maybe there's two messages. So, config again. Is it what a test suite looks like? Well, yes and no. What I'm trying to do t today is clean up my tests. If you use Google Test Framework, that's normal. So this is declaring a, text, a test within a test fixture. That's the name of the fixture, and that's the name of the test. So, I like long-named tests. That's just a personal preference. And the way I arrange, act, and assert, that's also a preference. And the fact that it doesn't fit in one page, that's something I'm trying to improve on now. But yes and no. The, uh, each test, if you use Google Test Framework, uses it like, looks like a function, only it uses a macro to define it so that it hooks into the test runner so that it can automatically de be detected at um, runtime. Um, but otherwise, it looks like a function, and you just set things up. And you have macros in here also provided by Google Test to uh, check to see if things are what you expect. And um, they'll either mark your test as failed or pass. That's generally, yes, what it looks like for C++ within VS Code. Um, this doesn't come by default with VS Code, though. This is something called the Test Explorer UI, which is a plugin. And then... That's the generic UI, so depending on what framework you use, yeah, you need another plugin. So I use this one because I use Google Test. So the combination of those two plugins gives you this view of it, which is kind of nice. I can look at the um, individual output for that test, which this one was kind of verbose. And it tells me what line number it failed on. There's some things missing, like I'd like to be able to click on that or click somewhere here to go to that line, because it should be able to figure out to jump me to that line, but it just, it's not smart enough. It's got to debug this test and a run this test, which are pretty convenient. But it also has this annoying, annoying bug as well that if I rebuild, the previous test results vanish. Okay, so it failed on iteration two. Okay, so that's the problem. It's sending more than one single configuration message. Let me, I'm, I'm actually curious what it is, so I'm going to debug this test. Not there, but there. And I'm going to look at the orc messages received. That is buried in here. Okay, there are four messages. Why are we getting four messages? It was two, right? So this one is coming out as a type. Single, it is a single configuration. So what's, why are we getting two of them? Yeah, why am I getting two single configurations? I don't know. I have to remember what this test was doing to understand this. Sure, anytime, Red Man. Get the current configuration, add a server, set it. Why do we get two of them? Announce single configuration change to all 
connected orchestrators. Oh, I know why. Because there's an initial one that I don't care about. So I can I can remove that by this part here. I can do orc dot reset the receiver. So that that should fix the test because the it sends the initial configuration and then it sends the update and we only really care about the updated one, right? So run that again. Yay! It's all green. Okay. Whew. How much more am I willing to do before I call it a day? If I, if I can get through all of these, that'd be nice. I'm trying to remove these function calls where they're not needed. That is still needed there. That I just did. I can remove some of this chrome here that I don't need anymore. I think this is the similar kind of thing, right? Announce it when it connects. Yeah, I think I can um, take that out and then make this orc dot wait for messages. Expect true. That we get the messages we're waiting for. I'm not too sure, so I'm going to test this one before I move on. Okay, yeah. Okay, we're good. Oh, didn't I figure I didn't need that? I can make that also a wait. In fact, um, I can simplify this more. The only thing I should receive should be that, right? Well, no, this is fine. This is fine. This is actually less sensitive to if I there's an if it sends two messages, then it it won't fail it. Okay. As well, that's redundant. Mm, why did I do that? I don't need that. Right? I don't think I need that. Yeah, why is it four? And then I clear it out? Yeah, this is wrong. Yeah, so this is this is just old. So just the default just expect one message and then we will reset the message receiver there because we get a bunch of crud at the beginning of the connection. Then we can just say expect true that we can we get the message we're waiting for. Yeah, exactly. All right, what about this one? That's, we don't need to wait there. Is this same same kind of thing here? Don't think this is required. I wonder if this is going to bite me later. I'll be removing one of these synchronization points I, did, I, I thought I didn't need it, but I actually did need. I don't think I need this one either. Okay. That's, that's it for config CPP. Let's see if I broke anything just now. I think we're good. All right. <laughs> Very nerve-wracking. These ones I need. Whenever we change the time and we're and we're um, expecting, this is what the worker thread does. It sense it's time sensitive, and it so we change the clock that we're pretending exists, mock clock in other words. And um, oh, but I, I you know what I can simplify this. I yeah I remember wanting to do this before. Just need to find the right place. I have a lot of mocks set up, and it's not... Okay, it's not the mocks, it's this test framework, right? 
Right, here we go. So, you can add it at the end. This will be advance mock time. And we'll have a double amount or period. And let's give it a body. And I didn't give it a type for return value, did I? No, I did not. Okay, so that takes the place of these two lines, really. So we advance the current time by some period and then let the worker thread the coordinator run once. So then this should make this easier to read. I just say advance time 0.9. And then advance time 0.2. Oops, misclicked. There we go. All right. Alrighty, ready, ready. Okay, so here again. Advance it by 2.0. And advance by 0 0.9. And I see down here another one. Advance by 0 0.2. Cool, done. That was DOS mitigation. Cool, all right. That's probably a good time to check in this stuff. Okay, let me split this into two. Uh, hold on. Yeah, let's just bring them all together. Why not? Look, this is all refactoring of tests. So, a couple things guided by this. So, add no messages received. Helper, add advance mock time helper, and then in general, I removed uh, remove unnecessary worker thread sync points. So where we're waiting for the for something asynchronously to ha to at least loop once. Those are a lot of those were un unneeded. Okay. All right. That I need, yes, those I need. Oh, here's one. The helper I just added. I could probably make a helper for this thing too. I'll do that. I, I, I want to get rid of these uh, other weights first though. What was this one? Okay, that's a sp that's a very special case. Why do I have it advance the time and not loop once? I think that's um a bug there. That should have been that which is reduced to that. Right? This doesn't matter if we wait, which order we wait on. Yeah, okay. I wish I, rem I, I could know where I was. <laughs> Actually, look at this, it's the same thing. That, that should just be advanced by another second. All right. I have to quickly scan through these till I find where I was. Oh, look at that. I did it again. So that replaces that, and then that again. I must have copied that. Or more. I must have copied that from the other place. Okay. Oh, this is really old stuff. Oh, no, it's not. It's a special case again. Hmm. Think about this. I don't know because uh, we connect second means that. Oh no, it's done up here. Why is 
Why is this in the arrange then? Oh, because this subject is dropping the incoming connection. So it will be dropped right away. I don't need that. And same thing here. Okay, how about this one? I think these do have to have a sync point because that is offloaded to the workers read to do. This one, though, is not needed because there's already a wait on the next line. And this one should have a wait. And this should be here. Fact, true. Wait for messages. And here's that um, helper I have. So that's this amount of time. Oops. Right, okay. Don't need that. Whenever we have this sending a message and then a journal entry, it's all synchronous. So that I was just being too cautious about. 26. So let me stop. Let me test now, and then I'll get into profile raft subs versioning. That'll be the last ones I, I hit. Have you tried on any Rust? No. There was a funny clip someone sent yesterday. If you've seen Handmade Hero, you might have seen it. But he had a, lo a little funny uh, rant where uh, he said, uh, Rust, Rust is okay, but you know, a better language is zinc oxide. And he went off on like, it, it was like almost semi techno babble, semi. Like he, he used real enough terms that you could have been fooled, but you know, zinc oxide. Is there really a language called zinc oxide? It's playing off of Rust being iron oxide, right? It was funny. I wish I had. I wish I had remembered the link. But he was. He he tells it so convincingly. You almost think that he. It's a. It's a real advice, or a real comparison. Ooh, what happened here? Oh, okay. I screwed those up. Message. Okay. I guess this does need a wait here. Um. Why would it need to wait? Oh, because this is using the old API. So let me fix this. Um, where's the... Here it is. So let me replace that. So const auto... Mm, what are we calling this? Peer equals new... What is it? Add, add connection, right? And it is whether it's private, so that is true. Okay, and then if I use the this is the new form peer dot send. If I spelled it correctly, send text message, and then I don't I don't need this encoding anymore. That does the wait for me, so that should clear that test up. That was messaging. Oh, I didn't get, get it quite right, did I? Because that's const. Can't be const. The Shakespeare programming language? Oh yeah, that one was funny too. <laughs> Messaging. Okay, did I fix the one test? No, no, did I? No, I didn't fix it. Shoot. Because I thought that did, that did await. It does await there. So, okay, let me look at the git lens to see what did it used to be before I broke it. 545 is here. What's... That's the same... That does the same thing. Oh, and that does a client. No, that's correct, right? Okay, hold on. Where does that does does a client wait, right? Yeah, client wait. Exactly the same thing. So what's different? It could be the add connection. Server true, empty string. Uh, 
It's not an empty string. Oh, you know what? I know what it is. The um, client doesn't match because I forgot to update that part. Yeah, that's what it is. It's making sure that that WebSocket is the correct WebSocket because there are two WebSockets involved there. There are two connections, and it's checking to make sure the correct one is kept. Yeah. Oh, did you find it? I think that might be it. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me uh, keep that around. Thank you for finding that. <laughs> so whenever someone asks me about Rust, I think I'm going to um, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make that a command. So make this a command. Well, okay. I don't mean to make fun of people who ask me about Rust too much, but maybe just I'll say I'll say I haven't. Okay, I'll, I'll make this into a command. Make this a command saying uh, for for responding to rust uh where i need to say i don't know anything about rust uh so i can't really say anything other than that i i've heard of it and that a hand made Hero has a funny clip about it. I have to be careful. I don't want to make fun of people who ask me about Rust because they ask all the time and it's it's a legitimate question. But I don't really know anything about Rust, but there is something funny that Handmade Hero made a uh, clip about. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Don't like to ask Stack Overflow? You're a bit new here to this whole programming thing. Can anyone help you out? What is a with a V host config? I don't know. I'm not sure what a vhost is. Is that a virtual host configuration? You could ask the question here. That's fine. If someone has the answer, then that's great. I also have a Discord channel where I have like a programming channel. You can ask it there. Someone might know. Um, but um, why are you? F why don't you like to ask Stack Overflow? That's a that's a great place to ask questions. You could probably find someone who's asked a similar question there already. XXAMP, except, yeah, I don't know. That's something I'm not familiar with, so I can't help you, but maybe if you ask the question, someone here might know. Yeah, I've seen Coxide uses that. <laughs> well, I like that he, he calls it the memory garden, that Rust has a memory garden, that when you allocate memory, you're taking from the garden, and then when you run through the garbage collector, you're, you're, you're wasting, it's, it's not, you're not recycling the memory, so eventually your memory garden ends up being empty. <laughs> that was just hilarious. Yeah, so um, go ahead and ask the question, Rubix. And if someone knows the answer, that's great. Otherwise, yeah, well, you can try my Discord, or if someone in chat knows, or if uh, um, we can help you um, find the answer, maybe, if you're reluctant to do Stack Overflow. But I still think that would be a great way to do it, find the answer, though. Oh, I was running this. It was passing... Was there another failure, or am I done with this? I can check that in, and then I'll go to the last stage of my work here. I need to f actually. I need to end really soon. Maybe I need to call it here because no. Let's fix the failure. I see a failure there. We'll fix the failure, and then I'll wrap things up. Because I got places to go and people to talk to and stuff. Shutdown coordinator is messed up. It did not receive a message. Why not? Oh, because this is a two. That's probably why, probably why. I hate it when it does that. It's messaging. So frustrating. It didn't used to do that. Async await in TypeScript? I'm getting more familiar with async and await in Python and in JavaScript. Let's see if I can understand this. So uh, uh, Python has this too now, where you just put an async keyword in front, and then it, it turns it into a promise, right? So that later you can uh, await it. Are you not showing the... Oh, no, you have it up here, sort of, right? No, that's a different promise. 
You have a wait to sleep. Where do you await the, uh... Oh! Look at that! Thanks for the sub, mutant penguin. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream. So, yeah, this is what I'm familiar with now reading about it in Python, is that that's like a synchronization point where you... This, okay, this whole thing is a coroutine, and then this will... Um... Suspend the coroutine for two seconds. And so WebSocket supports... I didn't know that, that it supported that. I'll have to look at that. Let me bookmark that. Because I'm, not, I'm doing it a, a, an older non-async way. Maybe I need to update that. That looks cool. Right, you don't... Yeah, I, I understand. This one you're awaiting... And the await really doesn't, it doesn't actually wait there. It just puts the coroutine on hold. And then two seconds later, it makes, it schedules it again and it, it continues, right? And this whole thing, so I didn't know that the on close could take an async thing. The way I'm doing it is with uh, a listener, which is the old way of doing it, right? So if I go here and show it here, there's a listener. So I'm doing it the old way. Uh... On close, right? Add event listener close, and then you it synchronously calls it. So you're doing it in a nice new async way. Maybe I should pick that up. Are you, you going to go? Okay, see ya. I'm about to head out too. Uh, but fixing that... Okay, it is fixed. Good. Good, good, good. So I can check this in, and then we can go raid someone. So I have more work to do. This is work. I'm a, I'll mark this as work in progress. So I remind myself. This is re refactoring of tests. Work in progress. So this is uh, use. Uh, this is use advanced mock time helper. And there were some weights I removed. Right. So remove necessary uh, sync points. I'll know what that means. Okay, push that. So I'm going to rate someone else because I got to go. But I hope you enjoyed the stream today. I'll be back tomorrow morning, for me, morning time, 10 a.m. Pacific daylight time. So that's UTC minus 7. So that's 1,700 hours UTC. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night or morning or evening. I'm going to go uh, find someone else we can uh, raid in the meantime. I hope hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Thank you, Bugbound. You're welcome, <laughs> I should say. Wow, there are a lot of people streaming. I have a lot of choices to pick from. Oh, th thank you, Jaynet. Uh, hmm. If you guys like C++, let's go watch someone else who's working on C++. I just need to make sure that he is still streaming. Because you know this happens. Okay, he's just started about 20 minutes ago. What is he doing, though? He's designing a racing simulator, so I don't know if he's working on his game or not. But he's a great guy. Tim Bidet. We're going to go raid him. Say hi. And then I need to go. So I'm going to push the button here. Yeah, Tim is working on his... He's making his own game engine in C++. It's like a rocket-powered racing game. Rocket-powered car racing game. So I hit the button. So we're going over to Tim's channel now. So bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.